Hey, we still on this weekend for a little... <laughs> you know it. I'm in desperate need of some... <laughs> what about you, Jim? No, uh, my sister's getting... Yeah, dun, da, da. The, the uh, wedding. She's getting married, so... When adventure calls, make sure you're ready to answer. Stable 360 ethanol treatment is specifically formulated for year-round use, so your engines will be ready when you are. Ready, willing, stable. The next generation of auto detailing is here, where simplicity meets performance. 303 Graphene Nano Spray Coating. Get a year of protection from a powerful graphene oxide formula. A formula that sends water flying off surfaces, keeping water spots at bay. Go beyond wax, beyond ceramic. Graphene Nano Spray Coating from 303. FC Fiero is here to help you keep your car on the trails, track, or tarmac after a weekend of thrashing at Grid Life Alpine Horizon Festival. So from now until Saturday, July 31st, we're giving the Grid Life friends and fam 10% off their first order at fcfiero.com using the code ALPINE at checkout. Thank you all for watching this weekend, and we hope to see you at the track next time around. The Falcon Azenus RT660 is the enthusiast's choice for ultra-high performance, engineered for predictable handling and stability. The RT660 provides maximum traction both on and off the track. Your competitive edge has arrived with the Falcon Azenus RT660. We're a mile high and an hour south of Denver for Gridlife's Alpine Horizon Festival. Thousands of people have traversed the country from all corners to Pikes Peak International Raceway, a 1.3-mile nine-turn roval that holds our competition this weekend. Time Attack hosts some of the craziest, fastest builds out there alongside home-built speed machines trying to maximize a chassis. My name is Kyle Heyer alongside Adam Nielsen for our third Time Attack session of the day. Adam, welcome back to Pikes Peak International Raceway. Had some really incredible times laid down earlier. Ferris Khartoumi of 54 flat, but the temperature has risen. It's been real hard to beat that. Yeah, I really don't see that being improved much uh, in this session, but what an incredible time. One of the best times, the fastest times we've ever seen, but the temperature continues to climb into the mid-90s and the track temp even hotter than that, so I don't think we're going to see Ferris Khartoumi go quicker in this session today. As you were saying before the broadcast, we'd be surprised to even see him out on the racetrack. Yeah, you know, sometimes it's just not worth pushing those uh, a car that's that high strong. Uh, in a, a session you know you're probably not going to improve on. So Ferris is kind of a wild card. You just never know what you're going to see from him. So so Ferris is a wild card, but we've got other <laughs> battles to, to talk about. We've got Street Mod. There's a battle going on there between Alex Moss and Eric Dewey DeWitt uh, in the number 70, the Boogeyman car. So uh, they're both going to be out here in Group A. And we'll also keep an eye on the Track Mod battle as well. There's a handful of drivers up there. Mike McGinnis, the quickest in his all-wheel drive GTR, still sub one minute there. So other battles to follow in classes outside Unlimited. Yep. Uh, and also some Club TR battles to follow. Ben Thorne has been crushing it in that EK Civic, and uh, it looks great with the valve livery. We'll follow him when he comes on track as well but he's kind of got his own little lead about a full second over yeah. ryan seiler he's been able to pretty consistently keep that full second or more lead at every event this season so a very impressive showing for him for a new class this year lots of action here at gridlife alpine horizon you can see off of the distance the cloud of dust there's an off-road course uh, kind of a rally style uh, course built out there as well the toyota off-road course tacoma's uh, trds uh, trd forerunners all sorts of really cool stuff so there's off-road stuff there's drift there's time attack there's gltc there's uh, HPDE and there's music. That's the, the, what everyone's excited about. The first time that music and motorsports has been put together at a Grid Life Festival in almost two years. So we're really excited to have the full force back of a Grid Life event. Even saw some remote control cars. Yeah, there's RC cars down there in the paddock as well. There's a there's a whole gaming setup down there with Forza set up uh, in, yeah. on some gaming rigs and, yeah. and torque drift and all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, Probably spent 10 minutes just watching them drift remote control cars with my five-year-old son. Man, that, that's pretty cool. I haven't had a chance to check that out yet, so I yeah. will have to do that. Really neat. 
So before we get into the full on uh, speed sessions of the day here, we've got uh, Time Attack right now. And then after this session at around 4.20 uh, Mountain Time, we're gonna have Grid Life Touring Cup race number one, followed by Drift. That'll be our afternoon broadcast. And then later tonight at about 6.10, we'll have GLTC race two, followed by Drift again to round out the day. Ferris Khartoumi is there on he track. he is, out on track. Still? One end plate on his wing still. Yeah. So he says, you know what? Sending it. Couldn't figure out how to, uh, how to get an epoxy <laughs> back on properly, so he'll just run without it. So now notice the clouds have come over the track a little bit here. Yeah. It's darkened up significantly. It actually, I felt, I don't think it was anything real, but I felt a few sprinkles walking over here. Uh, so. I did too. I, so I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be anything based on the clouds, but who knows? The, uh, the weather here is very unpredictable in years past. It, it has been. That's sort of a, a trait of this kind of, of geography with the mountains in the background. So Ferris Khartoumi sailing off into the banking. We're going to try to follow him for a lap. Uh, I think I saw one of the GLTC cars out there, too, yeah. maybe doing a little uh, a, a test and tune Hardship session. Lap of some yeah, sort. something like that. So Ferris is going to head onto the back straightaway and head into the infield. There he is in the number 72. Uh, man, that thing is a rocket ship shooting fire, brake lights illuminating yeah. through turn four. And uh, all the arrow on this car, look at that thing, sail at the exit of four. Threw the S's up over the curbs here, Adam. That car is is really a showcase of what what the time attack rule set will allow. Uh, huge arrow front and back, incredible amounts of power. Just what a wild machine. Across the line, will Ferris Khartoumi do better than a 54.009? He does, a 53.7, oh, oh and the fastest Holy lap of the weekend cow. by Ferris Khartoumi. Rocket ship. I saw. Holy cow. He made a post <laughs> earlier today that said he, he believed that there was a high 53 in it. So There I it mean, is. I would even maybe venture to call that a mid-53. What an in <laughs> insane time. I, I wonder if the clouds also coming over just cooled the track off enough to help that out, keep the grip in the car, but he just muscled that one Jesus. through. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> well, that was pretty spectacular. Oh, NASCAR out there. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, so for those that don't know, uh, <laughs> Furniture Row Racing, which was a NASCAR yeah. team that was eventually or, uh, uh, kind of chartered through Joe Gibbs Racing, yeah. was based in Denver, Colorado, and uh, I'm willing to bet that this is one of those chassis, uh, those chassis sort of... I know the track owner bought a bunch of their yeah. chassis when when they kind of, I think they w are under now, if I'm not mistaken. But yes. I know they yep. bought a bunch of those chassis, and, and I think they just kind of play with them. That team has closed down as of a couple of years ago, and, and I guess some of the chassis made their way into the hands of this team. And it's Cash Singh in the unlimited class rear-wheel drive uh, in that number 78, and we're going to see him uh, muscle that big old stock car. So those cars uh, will make about 850 horsepower to the <laughs> rear wheels uh, from massive V8 engines. They also weigh about 3,500 pounds. So they're not super light on their feet, but the power sort of makes up for that. Yeah. And there is the Festiva, Charlie Whitney. <laughs> yes. Uh, they call it Phoenix because they had a bit of a fire during construction and, and uh, rebuilt it. So, you know, a rise from the ashes <laughs> sort of situation. Well, it has. It's going to rise up onto the banking now at the exit of turn number nine. Climb up onto the front straightaway. His best time of the day so far was a 103.815. If he can go quicker than that, let's see. And uh, let's see, where did he go? They're 105.1. No, not, not quite, so a couple seconds off. Maybe just warming up and we'll go for another one. That car is yeah. so light that it's probably not super hard on the yeah, tires. Yeah, 1,900 pounds with driver. Got to be one of the lighter cars out there. For sure. Uh, Mike Forsyth goes second quick. The one, number 131, that is a Honda S2000 in the track mod category. That's got to be our fastest track mod. It, it is. That's the fastest that we've seen this weekend. And Team Dangerous Enterprises retakes their second spot in the overall standings, a 59.080. That's not the fastest they've gone, about three-tenths shy. But there is that S2000. I think that's the 131, and yep. indeed it is. Yep. We got big arrow on that car, yeah, too. Yeah, that's a very well-built car. Uh, a local. Saw some windshield Lots. wipers on the banking. I wonder if it's if it's actively got some raindrops That's over there. Not what we're looking for here, for sure. Uh, no, but uh, I like seeing. Oh, you see, maybe the track is a little bit wet. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the weather's like. I mean, this track isn't huge, and I just got a nod from Scott Giles across the room here that it is indeed raining okay. on the other side of the race. Actually, probably everywhere. Uh, yeah. This track yeah. isn't big enough to have it rain on one no, side like really. Road America. Yeah, there's a little bit of water on the camera lens there. So. Well. That Ferris got in just in time then yeah, to run that quick absolutely. lap. Absolutely. But th I, I'm sure that'll cool the track down pretty quickly. It's just also going to slick the racing surface up. So three drivers in the sub one minute area here as the 131 pulls off track. Alex England improving with a 101 there. That's a, almost a two second jump. 
Uh, for Alex England, uh, I believe that's uh, 102.6 was the time that he ran earlier, so oh. about eight-tenths of a second. Yeah. That's that Audi that looks a whole lot like a TCR car. Yes. We have not been able to confirm its existence as such. Yeah, I was going to try and get some time to go over there, but unfortunately I had to wrench on another friend's car, so I didn't yep. have time to go talk to him. There's Charlie Whitney again going after it, trying to improve on his time. There is Dewey in Boogeyman, and uh, got the livery applied to it this year. It certainly looks real fast, looks the part, but he's yeah. sort of on a cool down or warm up at the moment. Or maybe he's just going easy with the rain. It's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I can't see it on the front straight here. But yeah, if, it looks if, dry out here. If they had the wipers going, it had to be bad enough. So certainly it was. I just got confirmation from stream guys that it was raining pretty hard for a minute. So that probably, uh, woof, car running wide there. That's the number two of Ryan Dussex. That car has a really interesting story. That car is actually a professional built uh, Japanese endurance car of some kind that was imported here at yeah. some point. It's right hand uh, drive. Has, a, has a, an immense amount Ooh. of history. A lot of skipping and hopping out yeah, of the suspension that was, there. That was coming up onto the banking. Pretty something rough there. Yeah, something that you'd see on like a front wheel drive car is kind of skipping yeah. around a little bit. So that's kind of peculiar, actually. But it, across the line, he will go. And the number two of Dussex will not go quicker. That was three tenths lower than his best. Dropping onto the, almost onto the apron in the banking, really getting low. Ryan, a local of the Colorado area, but a regular in a lot of time attack events. Uh, he was at NCM with us earlier this year. That car, you see it all over. Yeah, looks good. He's got the, uh, the Alexander England car right behind him. That's that Audi R, uh, S3. Dewey goes quicker, 59.6 for Boogeyman. Go. That's sub one minute. That's his best time of the weekend. Those are the times we're looking for from Dewey. He's always, he's always there. And if he can put it all together, he's a force to be reckoned with. I wonder if this car has a blown shock. I'm starting to wonder. Yeah, it's bouncing around it like it's really rough, isn't it? Yeah, it, it looks like unnaturally rough. Like yeah. not like it's supposed to. Not like it's stiffly sprung. Yeah. Uh, so they might have an issue to work out. There's Boogeyman dragging the exhaust real low to the ground. It does look like he maybe lost the hanger or something. I, like I saw something tumbling. I wonder if that yeah. was the hanger off the exhaust. He'll I mean, it's always kind of low, but that seems yeah. lower than normal. He'll, he'll be banging it off the curbs. Man, lots of, of skipping and hopping over the infield section here. The 207 car, that is Adam Wood in street all-wheel drive. There's Dewey again up on the front straightaway. Can he go quicker? He would need to beat a 59.6. And across the line, does not improve. That's a one minute point two. Still not a bad time considering those were almost back-to-back -back laps. Yeah, and again, we were talking earlier that it, it, the time attack cars at the top of the grid typically are set up to, to really just go fast for a lap. I mean, yeah. that's how you maximize the performance of the car, one, right? maybe is, two. Is to, is to just get one or two laps and then be done. Yeah. Uh, so that's really, you know, if you can run more and be quick, I guess that's okay, but right. you're probably going to get the most performance by turn it up to where it almost explodes for that one <laughs> lap. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. So Charlie Whitney continues to roll. He's been doing a lot of laps today. Yeah. Really maximizing the track time. A lot of development uh, that they're looking for this weekend in that car. I love the, how the rear tires are just clinging on. Yeah, he has seven degrees of negative camera in the back of that car, which, is, which is kind of extreme. Ooh, lifting them off the ground, too, while we're at it. Really work it. That's got to be so fun, that car. Oh, yeah. And it makes power, too. Over 400 horse to the wheels. Yeah. So it uh, has to be an absolute rocket in a straight line. I bet that thing is just so much fun. It's like attaching a, a rocket to a go-kart. Cross the line for Charlie Whitney. No improvement, a 106.6, so a couple seconds off his best. I did see him get in oh. a little bit of traffic. There. Did you just see the compression that he <laughs> yeah. went through? Yeah, it's... That dip is real. Yeah, there's, there's no the, doubt. There's a tunnel under it, under yeah, the banking. It looks like he is flying. I bet you he's doing well north of 110, 120 off into the corner there before he they're, jumps on the binders. They're paddocked next to me, so I'll find out. Yep. Derek Boyd just went his quickest of the session, a 101.008, the number 772. That's an Evo 10 that has ran in Pikes Peak hill climb in the past. Okay. Uh, a really cool build. So he's getting just outside the one-minute flat mark. Still watching uh, Charlie Whitney. Looks like we're still getting some rain out there. Yeah. Sun's back out, so it should dry up what, what little moisture is out there pretty quick. There is Team Dangerous Enterprises. They've been kind of knocking on the door of of the top step all afternoon, but uh, Khartoumi's car is just... It's in a different league. It, it really is. And there is Ben Thorne from Gears and Gasoline, the Valvoline crew. 
in Club TR, kind of in a league of their own. They're in their own zip code as well. Yeah, they've done, done really well all year with that car. A lot of development. This car, you see it lifting up off the ground. They struggled a lot with the setup of this car last year. I remember specifically uh, they had Tom O'Gorman jump in it and try to sort out the suspension, but it was skipping and hopping, and they had real big issues with the suspension, but they got it tuned up, and now it looks very composed. Yeah, he was street class last year, but the the changes between street class and Club TR, at least from a suspension standpoint, are pretty minimal. So whatever it was that they sorted was more in, in setup than it was in changing parts. Yeah, and uh, really the only ma major difference other than the aero uh, adjustments have been the motor. The motor yeah. that was in that car uh, was transplanted into Tom O'Gorman's S2000, which has now been removed, and <laughs> another one's been replaced very famously. Very quickly. <laughs> very quickly. Uh, and Ben's got another engine in there now that's got stock internals to comply with the Club TR rules. But he is flying right now. We'll see if he can improve his best time so far, a 103.440. Chasing Charles Miller, our, our street class leader. Yeah, Miller's best time of 103.586. So he is a street class record holder, no less. Oh. But not from this weekend. All right. So he's about two tenths shy of, of doing his best lap of the day. So I guess we'll see if Miller can go quicker. And I would think that right now, uh, even with a little bit of moisture, that had to cool down the surface yeah. pretty quickly with all the water re-evaporating again. Yeah. So the track temp should have dropped pretty significantly, and that will make a difference. And there again is Team Dangerous Enterprises onto the back straightaway, into the kink, onto the brakes. As we wait to see or hear news about Charles Miller and Ben Thorne going quicker. Haven't seen him go across the line just yet as we continue to watch the GTR. Tight entry into four. Wonder if they're cooling down or warming up here. Seemed like they were very track right. Yeah, yeah. We need like a light that says hot lap, yeah. cool down. On <laughs> That'd be great. But it uh, you almost wonder if, if he's figured something out with that corner, if that's advantageous to just kind of rim ride the inside edge versus going the long way around. Well, different chassis will, will work differently. You know, I mean, it's an all-wheel drive car. He's got a lot of grip, a lot of tire. A lot of everything. That yeah, car's fast. I'm sure. <laughs> So uh, in terms of lap times, it does not look like Charles Miller. Oh, no, he did win a 104.1. Ben Thorne ran a 104.377. That's about a second slower than his best. Uh, so he's still out there chasing time. But as with a lot of these cars, I, I know that Ben Thorne Civic is always in development, so they're still going to be learning and taking away uh, what they can. There's Adam Wood in his street Ooh, on-wheel really drive Impreza. Yeah, he's hauling, isn't he? That's a right-hand drive car as well. That looks great. Kind of an interesting uh, car. It is, it's super clean looking. Love, love how it looks and up onto the banking again, nicely composed. That transition from the, ape, the what they call the apron, the inside edge of the, yeah. of the oval up onto the banking can be pretty rough. Uh, but across the line for the 207 and no improvement. That was a 106.3, his best a 104.2 zero, at least in this session. Uh, his best of the day is a 103.972. There's the 78. No, so this is a, I have a correction to make. So this is Cash Singh. Yes. Uh, there's another 78 car. That was the Furniture yeah, Row. Yeah, I think that was uh, Bob Boyla, who is, yes. is, I believe, some level owner of the track. Gotcha. So. All right, so correction there. So my apologies for that. They're both listed as a 78, both listed as unlimited rear-wheel drive. So I guess I could be forgiven for making that mistake. That Mustang is very wide. Yeah. Well, I feel like this car was here last year, was it not? I don't remember. So they have two cars in their paddock. Okay. And they both look very similar, but this one is definitely wider. Uh, this one has a, a pretty significant wide body on it. So I don't know if – I can't remember if they had both cars here or if the one – the, the slightly tamer car yep. was the one I'm remembering. All right. Now, oh, uh, it looks like Kartumi's back out on track going for a hot lap. I'm, I have one more thing to mention about Bob Boyleau's car, so we'll come back to him in a minute. Yeah. But look at Kartumi off into turn one. Looks like we're running, you know, yeah. IndyCar around here. That thing's hauling. <laughs> off the banking at the exit of NASCAR 2, then into the kink, well over, I bet, 130-plus easily, slamming oh, on the brakes into turn number three. This is a wild lap for Kartumi. See if he can go quicker than a 53.7, nicely slowed down, back on power, straighten it out, and then sling it through the tight stuff, Adam. What an insane wing on the front of that car. So that's more of a wing than a splitter. Um, there are some subtle differences in the way that they're designed. Uh, but full aero done by, by Cody Loveland with, with Affinity Aero, a longtime grid life buddy. 
Yeah, you can see it scraping on the ground. Again, the wings on these cars, essentially airplane wings turned upside down, yeah. so they create downforce rather than lift. And for the 72, it needs to beat a 53.710. I think he's backed it down. Yeah, he looks like he's... Man, I want to know what he would have run. Uh, but across the timing, yeah, didn't trip it that time through, so I'm not exactly sure. But he was going pretty good there for about a half a lap. The car has incredible pace in it. I mean, just coming off the banking onto the back stretch. I mean, I want to know what his, what his VMAX is because he's, he's doing well I'm into the hundreds. Good friends with Ferris. I can find that out pretty easily. Yeah, that, that would be an interesting discussion. If he's not doing 140 off into the braking zone, oh, I'd be I surprised. Oh, I think it's probably north of that even. Yeah, good. I mean, <laughs> that, 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 it looks like it's going. <laughs> I want to be wrong about that. Uh, but, you know, even at altitude, this car is just ridiculous. Yeah. Boosted cars are less affected by that. And uh, Scott giving us a little heads up that the yeah. GLTC cars are about 118-ish. Yeah. Uh, so just for, for reference <laughs> of how much faster this like car is with all the motors. Roughly 10 seconds a yeah. lap slower. Yeah, but you know the crazy, minute track, the, that's the crazy thing is, is this is Group A in Time Attack, and our GLTC pole sitter uh, would be sitting in – uh, f fifth spot. Fifth, yep. Uh, if if they were in this session, which uh, w the average power level in GLTC is right around 200 yeah. to 205, so they make a lot work with with not a lot of power. Yeah, yeah. Some of the times that a lot of these tracks that uh, the GLTC drivers are able to to wrestle out of those cars is really incredible. Pretty pretty insane. Brian Heitkotter was the one that will be sitting on pole for our race coming up in about 50 minutes. Checkered flag out for Group A here in Time Attack. Uh, Ferris Khartoumi again impressing, and uh, I'm glad that he was able to go quicker. I wasn't yeah, sure that he was even going to go out. I genuinely didn't think that was going to happen. That's amazing. That's a, a really, really good lap, uh, and he did it in one shot too. Went yeah. out to go try to beat it again, and, and I guess he felt something not quite right, so decided to, to bail out. There's the Team Dangerous Enterprises car. They did not go quicker than their time earlier. They missed it by about three tenths. Still a very impressive time. We Pretty did quick. not see Alex Moss out here in this nope, session. No Alex Moss, so... Do we knock it on his door, though? Uh, and also no Mike McGinnis as well in the track mod GTR. Yeah. So a couple drivers missing from the session here. Maybe they felt like the conditions weren't quite right. So that makes me think that Cartoomy went quicker in spite of the conditions, not due to them. Yeah. But I, yeah. I don't know. It, that, that's one of those moments to where you just look. together words. For yeah, it's, it was a pretty phenomenal, uh, f phenomenal lap. And I... Also, going off into the banking here, 10 degrees of banking is a lot for a road racer. It's not a lot for driving on an oval. Here's a good look at the Club TR car of Ben Thorne climbing up onto the curb, three-wheeling it. Three digging the left corner of the splitter into the ground. Fantastic shots here. Great replays. There's the 207 car, Adam Wood again. A little bit of a little bit of a all-wheel drive push yeah. there, but battled through it pretty well. Using all that track. This car looks so compliant over the curbing as well. It's not. It's not. It's uh, looks supple enough to kind of absorb the bumps without bouncing around, which is a hard really, thing to, to nail. He really gets that car to rotate around that corner. It's a, a very well-driven car, it looks like. <laughs> so, and then climbing up onto the banking again, a little wide there. And this is an interesting discussion. Tom and I were, were chatting about yeah. the exit of turn nine, the challenges of of staying tight or running wide. There's uh, Ferris Khartoumi again. Look at this run through the the middle here. This is wild. <laughs> Uh, and this know, is not a track built for this car. Let's, no, I mean, this is no, a bad this car, car is, track combo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, say what you want about arrow and slow speeds, but that car's still moving through there. Yeah. So There's actually, no so, so speaking of arrow at slow speeds, I chatted with Brian Heitkotter, who's our GLTC pole sitter. He practiced this morning without his rear wing, mm -hmm. and he put it right back on for qualifying. He said oh, even really? at the low speeds, he could tell that it, the wing was working up here, and uh, he was having a real hard time, especially on the banking. So uh, even at slow speeds, arrow will still help. And I, I bet you that Jackie Ding and, and Night Lives uh, guys, they'll tell you the same thing. Yeah. Uh, he's got such a cool story coming into racing. Who right does? High Cotter. High Cotter? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, Very well, he cool. comes from a, a sim racing background, right. right? GT Academy winner in 2011, I believe. Gosh, it's been that long ago. Yeah, he uh, ran and it's competed in and won the uh, the SRO America Esports competition that was held last year in 2020 and uh, now runs in, in Grid Life Touring Cup. He's still searching for his first victory, but this weekend he's looking real good. Yeah, certainly uh, due for it. He is, and uh, great guy, too, from Fresno, California. Was chatting with him today. Always a, a pleasure to chat with him in the paddock and, and all the CFR guys down there. Uh, Chris Forsberg's here. They got a, a handful of cars that they're running down there this weekend yeah. and uh, paddocked up 
it's it's a real good vibe in the paddock right now this weekend. So, uh, so Group A is done, and they're going to head on into pit lane. We're going to get Group B tiered up next. And uh, a couple uh, drivers of note. I think we got Ryan Seiler from Club TR, so we'll keep an eye on where Ben Thorne. Uh, uh, he did not go quicker, I believe. No, so I don't think so. He's still stuck at the 103.4. So Ryan Seiler will be shooting for that 103.4 this session. Yeah. Um, he's, he, I talked to him a little bit earlier today. Uh, he said the car was pushing pretty badly in the first session, and I didn't get a chance to talk to him about it in the second session. He made a few small setup changes. Um, Kind of scared to make any big changes from one session to the next. So still dialing that car in for this track. I think you have to, uh, you know, when you're when you're trying to chase lap times and you're in you're on the podium and you're in the competition, yeah. it's sort of a risk to, to change stuff, right? right. Because you, if you're second, if you change something, you could quickly fall out of that spot. Uh, and uh, if someone goes quicker and you can't, so right. uh, you know that's why you got to take notes on where where you were Keep and, track and where of you're where going. Where it was, right? so you can change it back if it made it worse, for sure. So on track now, Josh Tenji of the 246. That is an unlimited uh, Audi TTRS, his best time, a 104.771 from earlier today. Trey Tyler in street running a, the number 727 car. He's out on track as well. Ryan Seiler, Jeremy Bailey in a BRZ. It might actually be an FRS, not that it matters. but uh, <laughs> A Toyobaru. A Toyobaru, like for them. sure. Uh, so a handful of drivers on the track now for Group B starting their laps. And in about a minute, we're going to know who is the quickest, at least of the, of the front takers. Brad Riemann's back out there, the 234. That's the Focus RS. Uh, Peter Granberg in another uh, a, a, a charged, supercharged BRZ. I think it's supercharged. I want to say, I, I feel I like it's supercharged. Right. I think you're right. I, I stumbled into his, uh, onto the, the, the 86 forums, reading all of his build, you know, when he was blowing up transmissions and stuff. Real interesting yeah. to, to dig through all that and see his development on that car. So first time's across the line, Tenji, a 105.011 uh, is the first time that comes across the board. Trey Tyler, a 105.104. And these are all slower than they ran earlier, but first lap out, we'll see if, uh, if they can go any quicker. Also uh, to note that uh, Corey Conanchuk in the uh, Alfa Romeo 4C is also out on track. I saw him do a warm-up lap. That's a white and red multicolored Alfa. Really cool car. Carbon tub-based car. Yeah. I think one of the cheapest carbon tub cars you could buy. I think it is the. It might be the I think cheapest. it's the cheapest. Uh, or I guess I should say uh, most inexpensive. Well, yeah, definitely okay. not That's cheap. Fair. Cheap is, yeah, not <laughs> Relative. a word you use there. Um, there used to be one of those for rent on Turo in the town I live in. And I almost did it just for the experience, but never did it. Now it's gone. Gone like they sold it or gone? Well, it's not on Turo anymore. Okay. I, I'm not sure. All right. Well, <laughs> I seriously considered it a little bit, and then it never happened. So I've heard those things are brilliant. It just they're, it's, they're not super common, so I'm, I'm not right. sure how many people ever really get to experience them. Right. There's the 461 out on track. That's uh, is that Luca uh, Caffiero in the street mod car. Yes, it is Subaru STI. Best lap time of the day uh, was a 106.148 for that STI. Uh, so little little time left to knock down. Tenji goes at 104.206. That is quicker by a half second. So best lap of Tenji's weekend so far. Trey Tyler still just outside about four tenths from his best. Ryan Seiler a 105.3. Remember the time to chase for him is the 103. Uh, Look, excuse me, we'll look for this. A 103.440 from Ben Thorne. So still about a, uh, a second or two to gain to get up to Ben Thorne. Yeah. yeah and he's gone faster than that today, too. So. Yeah. So there is one of the two Toyota Supras that is out on track in this session. That's the number 469. Uh, that is Rich Enriquez in the Street GT category with that Supra. 105.784, best time from the previous session. And we'll see if Enriquez can go quicker. Best time in this session of 107.1. Jumps up a spot, 106.457. So still a little bit off. Another car on track to note, Dustin Williams in the 595. We chatted briefly. He's the car right behind this white uh, Volkswagen. There he is. There's Dustin. And uh, I chatted with him a little. We're going to try to get him up here in the booth when TJ's drifting. You're going to have TJ oh, cool. up here when Dustin's out on track tomorrow. So if you're a fan of either of those two drivers on YouTube, uh, make sure that you check out the stream tomorrow uh, afternoon. We're going to try to sync that up a little bit, get him on the live stream. I think that'd be kind of neat. Absolutely. 
Uh, so talk to, to both of them. And I, I followed uh, both these guys on YouTube for quite some time. Back, I followed TJ back when he was running uh, Miley, the BRZ, back when it was basically unmodified right. uh, a couple of years ago. And now that thing is uh, super low and Nardo <laughs> Gray and big old wing and <laughs> crazy. He's got yeah. 10 cars now. And, yeah. Uh, man, living the dream. So Dustin's car, while we're on this, uh, Dustin's car is set up. It, it's classified as a track modified car this weekend. Uh, Sort of. It's track modified because of the tires he's running. Right. This car is more closely aligned to what you'd see in Club TR. So we'll keep that in mind when we kind of uh, we'll kind of classify him against the Club TR category and kind of factor the tires out of it a little bit. Right. Obviously, for scoring purposes, he will not be in Club TR. Yeah. But there's a lot of a lot of times you'll see drivers whose cars, you know, like, oh, that's strange, you know, and it, a lot of times it's just like one little mod that kind of yep. puts you over. Yep. And. Uh, you know, it, for, for Dustin, he's based in California, not a whole bunch of grid life out in the West Coast, so right. no real need to, to change your format. Just come out here and have fun. I think that's all Dustin's trying to do. And uh, Dustin, his best time is a 107-169. Uh, so just a little bit off of the Club TR uh, pace. Uh, pace right now. His car makes about 190 wheel, from what okay. I understand. Yeah, that's right in there. Yep. Most looks great. Stuff. The hardtop looks great on that car. It is a really cool looking car. I like the livery that's on it. Uh, it's got some crazy back bump or rear bumper on it. I'm not. Yep. I need to go and check it out. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll have to ask him or, or have it have it checked out. There's. I think is that the other super? Or is that the 469? I think it's still Enriquez. There's one other one out there. That's the 669. I think. Yeah, Austin Shipley. Also running in Street GT. And this is an interesting car to run in Street GT because you typically think of Street GT as a Corvette Camaro yeah. Mustang class. Yep. Sort of strange to feel like a Super drops right in, but it, it's well, doing well. Uh, you know, the class was built for super er, for boosted V6s and naturally aspirated V8s. So, uh, you know, Supras and, um, I mean, there's a handful of other cars in there that, that would fit in there well. You just don't see them as often. Yeah, I mean the Supra. I, I guess we've seen Supras around in street mod for a little while, and, and also in street class. But uh, now, it, or you know, floating around other categories. But I think Street GT is actually a pretty good natural fit for yeah. them, uh, based on their on their drivetrain layout and their their power levels and that sort of thing. We just had a look at Josh Tenji and the TTRS, and Abe loves these things. Abe is not able to be I, with us this I weekend. I love these things too. They're cool. Um, very cool cars, uh, and that little five cylinder engine that's in there. One of the coolest sounding engines out there. So. What's that? Uh, yeah. But they're not that they're supposed to move the other one to another jack. Uh, I mean, they like to switch. Plug it, plug it back in. Plug it back in. So it's like you need to find where else you need to plug it in. Like switch. Uh, sorry about that. So uh, <laughs> checking back in, uh, looks like uh, Corey Konachuk ran a little quicker in the Alpha 4C, uh, 106, 2.53. I don't think that's his best. It's about a second off, but I think he's improved since we last mentioned him. Uh, but no, interesting to note, I have to update this. It's not refreshing very nicely for me on race here. I think a lot of these drivers have run some of their best laps right out of the gate, which is, yeah. you know, we've talked about that a lot today, and I feel like that's sort of par for the course. But some drivers have been finding pace six, seven, eight, nine laps into the into the event. I think when you see guys that improve later in, in sessions, that's – more of an experience thing they're they're getting used to the track they're getting used to the car they're improving themselves as drivers because uh, they might be newer to the sport or whatever it is and so they're finding time just naturally not so much because uh they're finding or they're pushing the car as they're just improving themselves there is cody smith in the the oldsmobile cutlass love this car we had a yeah. great view of it slipping and sliding around earlier yeah absolutely he gets the most out of it for sure and he's going to head straight back into the pits uh i don't know if he had laid down a time or if that was just kind of an out and in sort of deal uh, i know he was having a little bit of trouble with with a few things maybe some cooling issues i saw that he had cut a larger hole in his in the front of that car to kind of get some more air in there i don't know if the aero and the altitude are kind of wreaking havoc on him cooling wise or what exactly the problems are but i know he's chasing some issues tenji going around the outside on the banking trying to improve on the 104 206 i lost my wi-fi up here so i'm trying to, to get a hold of race here just so we can keep an eye on what he's running i know he's it, we only really get a, a, no, a notification on our 
our timing uh, it will only show it if he goes quicker. Uh, on the brakes for turn four. Certainly looks like he's going quick. And just behind him is that Volkswagen that we've been kind of keeping an eye on as well. That, uh, trying to remember the name of that driver. Uh, that, I, I think, is that Jared Thompson. Yes, it is, a 965. That car is classified as a track mod uh, machine. I kind of wonder if that's, uh, you know, like a tires thing or something like that as well. I, I bet it's, it's uh, that would be my, my guess. Yeah. Uh, it seems like a lot of, uh, of track mod kind of catches a lot of those kind of outlying yeah. tires. I kind of joke it as it being uh, street tire unlimited. So when you, you know, you've got cars that are gutted out or, or whatever, tires... Um, below the 200 tread, tread wear mark, that's where they're going to end up. So when you have people that show up to one or two grid lives here and there but don't necessarily have their cars built to grid life rules, that's a lot of times the end, ends up being the catch-all. So Tenji's last lap was a 105.2. So he's a little off but still out there just making laps. And I, I find that kind of commendable. He's still yeah. out there trying to learn and figure out how to go quicker. Just enjoying the track time. Yep, and, and while your tires might be warm and your engine's hot, you can still learn something now, uh, even when your your car's not optimal, that you can apply later uh, in, in, a, in a later session tomorrow or, or even earlier session tomorrow. And, and seat time is seat time. Right. So. And that, that's why, you know, we talk about Pete Lindbergh in Group C in the fit. His, his whole thing was project seat time. A fit, probably one of the most reliable cars you could just beat on all day yeah. and put laps on and yeah it's not super fast but you learn so much uh just running even even a super slow car so tenji a 1040 is still where he sits uh trey tyler still second siler uh has been unable to encroach on ben thorne's lead in club tr I haven't seen him out there much i don't know if if he had to come in for something or i don't know he's just uh not been able to to really encroach much on that lap time that thorne set earlier in the day. And I think given the, the power levels <laughs> of Thorin Civic, it's yeah. going to be a pretty hard chase. Yeah, it's a very fast car. Well-developed, lots of good parts under the yep. under I mean, that car. I mean, I have to, and maybe you've got some more insight on this, uh, Adam, but, you know, we were talking earlier about the GLTC cars and how quick they are with, uh -huh. with limited power. And, yeah. yes, they're on slicks. So that has a, a lot to do with it. Yeah, there's some weight in but, some of them too. For right? sure. But there's also something to be said for, you know, uh, Ben Thorne's got more power. Yeah, but there's also other places where you can make up time, and and I think that's where the focus, sh you know, needs to be for a guy like yeah. Siler because he can't chase him down with power. No, uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of time to be found in, in just fine tuning chassis development and uh, improving yourself as a driver too, using the data that any of a multitude of systems that you can use uh, give you, and and just looking for small bits of time here and there that all adds up. Yeah, I mean, I think for, for a guy like Siler, uh, you know, the, the car might be kind of maxed out. He might be driving as hard as he can. But, uh, you know, th that's that's time attack. We talked about it. it's a, it's a builder sport, right? Yeah. So uh, what do you learn? How can you develop the car better? Everyone's running under the same rules. Uh, so it, it's just how do you make your chassis a better car? It's more development time. It's it's uh, it's more time behind the seat to maximize the, yeah. the changes that you make. We chatted about our Canadian friends, Houghton and Borsma. I mean, yeah. They put their blood, sweat, and tears into one lap, and uh, and they don't get the seat time, and that, no. that's got to be. I've always kind of wondered, like you know, if 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 those guys could just leave the car alone from one event to the next and just work on setup, if how much time is left in those cars, you know? But they always seem like they're changing stuff and and chasing after the next uh, big mod that you know, and it's always worked well for them. But I I think the real the real challenge is I, I'm just shocked that with so little seat time they can just go out there and maximize it right away yeah or, or maybe they're not and they're still fast but i mean right. if they had 20 laps to figure the car out they could probably go so fast well one but of the, the car won't that, last that long one <laughs> of the things that i think about when i when i look at time attack times and especially with the pointy end of the stick uh is that you can kind of compare their lap times to some of the pro level cars um especially at tracks like road america and road atlanta where those events take place and you know yeah Guys like Will and, and James run similar lap times to, um, you know, I don't even know what classes those specifically are. But when then you look at their rule set, they have less arrow, they have less power. Um, so there's definitely something they're doing differently that's making that time up, the pro cars. Um, and I think there's a lot to learn from, from that. Certainly is. Looks like Group B is essentially 
checkered. I haven't seen a checkered flag yet, but there's only a couple cars left out there making rounds. There's the 965 again of Jared Thompson. And there's a Miata out there as well. And we, you know what's, what's interesting? Much. I think it might be Brian Riley. Not a lot of Miatas here this I was going to say the same thing. I mean, Miatas are, are typically the kind of the bread and butter of, of most so track weekends. But I think the issue in Time Attack is that they they don't necessarily take well to a lot of the rule sets because there's some limitations of the car from the factory that just don't work well in Time Attack. Yeah, I, I think, well, also, I mean, Miata's in general up here, uh, if they're not boosted. Well, uh, yeah, there's that too. It would probably be a challenge. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we see tons of them at, at, you know, maybe not in Time Attack in particular, but we see th lots in DE and, and GLTC elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it just yeah. seems like at altitude, uh, not incredibly popular. There's a lot of, lot of turbocharged cars, a lot of supercharged, you know, B, uh, you know Subarus and that sort of thing, uh, just because that's what people drive up here. Uh, the E46 we saw on screen just there a minute ago. His name, uh, first name is Wes. I can't remember his last name. Uh, Wes Case? Is that his name? Yes, I think so. Yep. Uh, he is working his way towards uh, dr driver development to be able to run in GLTC. So that car is what okay. was specifically built to be a GLTC car. It looks uh, a lot he like... He just wants uh, the seat time. Yeah. So uh, before he feels comfortable making that jump to the to the wheel-to-wheel -wheel part of, of racing. It, it looks a lot like uh, Colton Wade's M3. Yeah, he's affiliated with uh, with the Kellys. Oh, okay. So, so. That, well, that's a good group to be affiliated with. They yeah. have a lot of fabrication skills and that yeah. sort of thing. Smart, his, smart his, people. Yeah, for sure. His best time of the weekend so far is 108.1. You throw some Hoosiers on that boy, it'll be right where it needs to be. that's why it's unlimited is that it's got Hoosiers. Ah, okay. So, uh, but he's just working on – Sure. You know, I, I think he's kind of newer to the driving thing. Uh, so he's one of those cases where uh, somebody that's, you know, working their way up the ladder. Yeah, and that's really cool. And, and again, GLTC is sort of an ex always expanding, and we, we've talked extensively about it, so we won't chat about it too much on time <laughs> attack time. But that's fine. Uh, the the uh, the field size here is, while it's uh, smaller, way smaller than normally is, it's still bigger than it has been. Yeah. And it's the the competition level has risen so much over the past year. Also, the larger displacement cars have become a be, become a more popular choice lately, which is great because for a long time it was the Miata S2000 and Civic yeah. Pro Club. Variety is the spice of life. Sure is. That's what the rule set was built for. So, all right. So with uh, Group B, uh, I still don't see a checkered, but I think oh well, it's like they're pulling in. I guess everyone so. they might have already gotten it, and I just missed it, so that's all right. Sitting there at the top of grid, my friend Dalton Klein. We've been thrashing on that car all weekend, so, so we're hoping that this will be his first timed lap. This is the Corvette, or is th this okay. is uh, my buddy with his Corvette Z06. Yep. First, first weekend out on what is a a basically brand new car, um, new engine, sequential transmission. Uh, it's just been a bunch of little things that have held that car up. Where so. does that sequential come from? Is that is that just like a, a boxed transmission it's you a, could buy, or so is it? So it's a Samsonis uh, brand. Okay. Um, they sell it as a bolt-in affair. I mean, that was like uh, he put it in in a day type thing. It was it was really simple, very little gotcha. work. Um, full standalone computer to control the the ignition timing and stuff so that the car can be shifted. Um, but yeah, it, it's if it works, it's going to be a wild build. Well, he's gearing up on the grid and ready to go run. Into, so this is the first session that he's run all weekend. Yeah. So I kind of talked to Adam Jabay before uh, before this session started to kind of get a feel for where he wanted him. Uh, and he said, put him in the front of either uh, B or C. So here he is. Well, let's uh, we'll we'll follow him along and we'll, we'll kind of keep an eye on that bright orange Corvette as he tears up onto the racetrack. Here is a look at the paddock, at least down, uh, I'm trying to figure Almost out where like this the is. car show area. Yeah, so there's a car show component to this weekend. There's, uh, there's of course, the arcade that's happening as well. There's bars and food trucks, and this is just a really cool event to hang out at. Yeah, so much to do and see. Uh, really, f the festival atmosphere is definitely back, and the last festival that has happened was Road Atlanta, uh, Grid Life South, back in 2019. That was the last one that has happened. So you haven't missed much if you haven't been to a Grid Life <laughs> festival. It, it's just, we, it hasn't been the full-on uh, you know, music and motorsports that we've, we've come to know and love. We, we've had... Uh, "Quote unquote festival events that right. are you know the, our typical motorsports product, but glad to have a, a really cool music lineup this weekend. Uh, you can find out more uh, at, on the Alpine Horizon website. It is different from the normal grid life that I usually send you to. I think it's just AlpineHorizonFestival.com or something like that. Uh, so check it out and, and head there to learn more uh, 
I'm not sure if there's still tickets available. I don't want to say that they're not. I know I saw posted on social media earlier that most of the single day Saturday tickets had been sold out. So whoops. By now that might be done. You're too late. <laughs> so <laughs> All right, group C. Oh, did I see is Mike Omic here? I don't think so. I saw him on a, a, on a, 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 an entry list at the beginning of the weekend, and then I didn't see him in, in, I mean, in our timing list. Maybe he's showing up late. I did see a streak of black I, and orange I, there that could very well have been him. I thought I did, too. Or black so. and red, excuse me. Yeah, we're going to keep an eye on it here. Let's hold this shot for a second and see if we can find the number six Subaru. That would be Mike Omic. Street mod competitor. Longtime grid life. A lot of well, a lot of fits out. No, uh, Lots maybe of fits. Maybe not. Oh yeah, oh, there, there it is. is. Michael Amick. Well, Look he finally that. made it. That's great. So Michael really? Amick on track. Uh, Dalton Klein on a hot lap now. So let's see if we can find that orange Corvette and follow him through. Uh, that car is going to be ripping pretty good, uh, provided the transmission. Gosh, I hope so. Not that's not the orange Corvette. My my <laughs> night will be worse if it's not. So <laughs> that hopefully that's not the. Uh, oh, there he is. There's Dalton there Klein. He is, yeah. Well, I, I wonder if he's going to take a, a tentative kind of yeah, warm-up. Yeah, so this uh, new brake system, new engine, new trans, new engine management. There's a lot of new going so on you here. So you do 130% off yeah. in the turn oh, one. Oh, oh, there it is. Look out. Oh, geez. Well, so I, I was joking about that, but I didn't mean to <laughs> actually do it. So one of the things <laughs> he's really worried about was uh, trying to dial in brake bias, and clearly we didn't get it right the first try. Well, it, you know, you'd, 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 so. you'd tune it, you figure it out, you'd loop it and try it again. Yeah. Thankfully, there's not a lot to hit here, so. Well, as long as you're not on the oval section, it's yep. it's a pretty safe track. Right. Uh, and you don't really have to break anywhere near the walls, which is great. Right. So he'll get back rolling and go back at it. Here is a look at the replay. <laughs> uh, great quick replay shot. Thanks, guys. We have a look. And I think as soon as he goes to tap the brakes here for the left-hander, right there, gets up on the curb. Yeah, just yep. snaps. Yep. Man, big moment. I know he's really nervous about this, so. Uh very excited to still see him out on track, and I mean, I'm calling this a success still. Uh, it's so. running. It's it's going around the track, uh, for better or for worse. <laughs> he did it. All right, let's get an eye on who else is on track at the moment. Uh, it looks like the 810 car of Matthew Overstreet and Club TR is the quickest driver so far, a 109.357. Not his quickest, uh, but nope. You got bumped there, Michael Amick. Ooh, 109.357. All right, well Amick uh, hasn't had any time changing there, benchmark, so uh, yeah. So that would uh, be his benchmark. He, he's going to need to really pick up the pace to be able to, to compete with, with the rest of the street mod class. But being in the back of Group C, I'm sure he's going to fight some traffic issues to start with here. Yeah, I, I would bet that it's going to be a, a pretty – Yeah, he's going to have an uphill battle. Uh, if I were him, his best option is probably to make a warm-up lap or two, come in, ask for some space, and go out there and try and put in a flyer. And then just kind of scrub this session. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, if this is his first session of the weekend, like we were saying, just kind of dial things in. Yeah, figuring them out. So, uh, people like this, when they come in a little late, you get you get put in the back of of what are the slower sessions, and um, we know he's got the pace to be higher up. So his best bet is is just to try and work his way through it. Well, it should be a pretty fun uh, driver to watch this session because he's probably going to continuously oh, yeah. get quicker. Uh, even if it's just a little bit at a time. Overstreet goes back to the top, a 108, 976. Uh, that is about three tenths off his best. Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Hamilton in the track mod uh, BMW 325i is just shy of his best as well. Uh, a couple tenths off. There's a CRX SI that led one of the earlier sessions today. That's the 410. Seth Conifer. Yep. Love the CRXs. We chatted about those earlier. Here's a, a car that I thought we'd see more of in Sunday Cup. That is the 810, I think, right? Yes. Yep. Uh, of Matthew Overstreet. So this is a Club TR car, but this is the, the Fiesta ST. Right. I think uh, the normal uh, Fiestas, non-ST, base right. Fiestas, would be great choices for Sunday Cup. Absolutely. I actually have one laying around. I haven't bothered to, because I have an FRS, so it feels like the FRS is the car you'd track. Right. But I kind of want to drive the Fiesta because I don't care. Fiestas kind of have a bad reputation uh, in the track community base ones. you got to do a little bit of work on them because they what, do what they have explode? a tendency to roll over. Oh, good. Yeah, the FRS probably won't roll over. No. So. No. Uh, <laughs> the base, the base Fiestas, the the suspension is a little too tall and a little too soft, uh, and even in autocross, so they just grip roll. Or I've seen them roll. So I we actually had a, an ST roll at my local autocross here not that long ago. Man, just so. they they just roll with the grip of the tires. Did you just hit a curb or what? Nope. 
Man. I heard that the 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 Jetta the back way back in the day, like the Jetta TDI Challenge uh-huh. or whatever, those yeah, cars yeah. would do the same thing. Yeah, really weird, dude. So yeah, that, I mean, you can see how much yeah. uh, that car picks up the that back inside tire. So yeah, I mean the ST is a pretty significantly quicker car too. Oh yeah, <laughs> so yeah, lots of grip. But they're they're a lower car, so their center of gravity is a little bit better for this sort of thing. Yeah. But also the you know the foot tall curbs probably aren't helping. Yeah. I wouldn't want them to you know the, the especially turn nine way inside to be hanging a bunch of G's <laughs> and then climb up on the curb. That would probably yeah. <laughs> that might lead to that situation you were mentioning. Yeah. Uh, just behind. So there's the 47 car. That is uh, Nicholas Lucchesi street car. Uh, 112.1 is his best time. Right behind him is a Club TRBRZ, uh, which I think is Daniel Montanez in the number 68. Uh, and speaking for a local friend of mine. Oh, really? So, yeah. Uh, I, I brought my FRS here, and I will say that if your car, if you own a twin, an 86 FRS BRZ, it's bone stock, it will struggle up here. Yeah. Uh, they are, you know, they're not known for being fast cars in general, but it's especially problematic at altitude, let's say, to say the least. Yeah. So, Dalton right. Klein back out there again. Yep. It has a 112.6 logged, and I think he's just going to try to work up to pace. And Is there a brake bias dial in that car? Yeah, he's got one right there uh, on the transmission tunnel. Gotcha. So that he can turn and, and just kind of dial that in. So manual brakes, no power assist. I, I, a couple of GLTC guys, Eric Till, w- used to run uh, manual brakes as well. And I, I always wondered what was the reason for that versus using power assist. Is there I, really a reason? I actually or? argued with him on it. Okay. I didn't, I didn't think it was the right move. So. Do the, is it just drivers searching for more f- brake feel? I don't know what exactly it was that Dalton was after. Um, I know some people believe there's more brake feel in it. It's simpler, it's lighter, yeah. whatever. Um, not really sure that I agree with any of its advantages. Well, uh, it, it certainly would require a lot more pedal pressure. I yeah. think. I mean, that, and that, that alone can make it feel more confidence-inspiring, uh, I'm sure, but... Also, just having a you know, ABS and, and real good uh, power assisted brakes will also be confidence inducing. You can still run a Bosch Motorsports ABS without power brakes. Gotcha. So, Is it, so he uh, he has ABS. Uh, it's on the car. It's not. It, okay, so it doesn't. It's not wired up. <laughs> so his brakes are just a mess. Yes. Great. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Well, to my life. He, he did just jump up to a 1089, so he's he's gathering experience in this car. That car last year here ran right at the one minute flat mark. So with a little less power and, and a different trans. Daniel Walker in the number 108 street mod car. He jumps up to the top of the board of 107.963. And there's Dalton Klein. Love the orange color on that car. Looks good. Is that a wrap or is that color? Uh, it is paint, but it's not the original. Okay. It, it, wasn't that called like Sebring Orange or something? <sighs> There's a name for it. Yeah, I think that's what the Corvette color is, is Sebring Orange. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't know if that's the Corvette color. Though. Gotcha. Looks good. Uh, so Daniel Walker at the top of the the board in street mod. There's a little, little street mod battle forming in Group C here. Daniel Escobar right behind Daniel Walker. Another street mod front wheel drive car, 184, and it's busy out there. There's a lot of cars yeah, out here for lots sure. Lots of cars. Oh, there is an Acura TL out there, isn't there? Someone was mentioning that earlier. No, uh, there was in a drift session that someone yeah. was asking about the Acura TL, and I, I said there's no way there's an Acura TL drifting, but there's one out here. I uh, think. There's a a Civic and a Fusion in the drift sessions. I didn't see the Fusion. That's cool. Yes, there's a an LS swapped rear wheel drive Fusion. What what year is it? Like a new one or yes. like that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, Coyote powered coyote. Fusion. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. That, that, that's like it's pretty much a NASCAR at that point, yeah, right? It's quite it's quite a car. <laughs> uh, if anyone uh, was curious about the TL, that's Alan Lehman in the number four thirty four. Uh, if if that was the TL that was being referenced earlier, yeah. there's your answer. <laughs> Mike Omick up to a 109.3. Again, I, I think that's the time that he ran earlier. Hasn't uh, gone any quicker. Not much improvement. No. no, still trying to figure things out. There's another BRZ. I think is this this yellow BRZ. What number is on the side of this car? I've been trying to track this down. Uh, there's only two of them out there. It's not Daniel Montana's, I believe. I think it's the other BRZ. Oh, is that Daniel Walker? Daniel Walker is a street mod BRZ. What is he? What are we? What are we looking at here? <laughs> 108. That's Daniel Walker. That's go. that's the guy. I was I thought this was uh, a a car that was in a different category, so I wasn't 
uh, convinced that it was a street mod, but here it is. Now, this is, a, 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 I think, a refreshed uh, BRZ. I think it's a newer one, like a 2017 plus. Uh, they changed these cars a little bit uh, from the original generation, so they got some, uh, all these suspensions on this car is probably all changed, but the motor in stock form got a little bit of a power bump. Yeah. Uh, not significant improvements, but uh, they did some changes here and there. The headers are a little different. Uh, just try to maximize what was already in the car, but uh, mostly just aesthetic changes. Uh, so I don't. I think my. Uh, I gotta get my computer Etherneted in. I keep yeah. losing my internet here. <laughs> uh, so that'll that'll be. Uh, Matt's telling me in my ear that Wi-Fi stinks. I agree, Matt. Wi-Fi stinks. It's a bad technology. Um, except, yeah, it's it's fine. All right. <laughs> As a guy who makes his living building internet yeah, networks, I am not a Wi-Fi fan. <laughs> uh, me either. TGA Performance in a, a street all-wheel drive car. They're the number three seventeen. That is. A Subaru WRX, I would bet that it's that one right there. Or Pretty is that the cool 219? Car. That is the 219 car. That's Brett Bauer in Street Mod. There's a couple STIs out there at the moment. So what are your thoughts on this newer generation STI? Obviously, there, there's you know rumors and pictures of the new, the new, new one. The newest one. I don't know that I've seen the newest <laughs> rumors yet. Yeah, I but kind of try to stay at it. It seems like... This version uh, was not uh -huh. super well received in, in terms of the looks department. I think they look fine. I but how don't are they in performance? Um, I don't know. We don't see a ton of them on track. Uh, you know, I know that ST or the S two hundred nine cars are insane out of yeah. the box. But those are like uh, eighty grand race okay. cars. Yeah, I don't. I know they were expensive. It's hard to. It's hard to differentiate between how much of it really was and and dealer markup and insanity. Yeah. Um, car going real slow at the exit of or the entrance to the NASCAR banking. It's a G35, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, trying to see if I can find out who that is. Uh, that would be Nathan Jones in the 264 running real slow and real high up on the racetrack. Wonder if he... he having some problems? Must be. He's going real slow. So if you're slow on the banking that slow, <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> if you don't have a problem, uh, you should probably <laughs> yeah. go a little quicker. Yeah. It's a bad spot to, to have a, a big speed difference. There's the 142 car. Uh, that is Juan Johnson and Club TR S2000. And there is the triple nine. I don't think we've seen this car on track yet. Uh, yeah. Oh, we have. Daniel Escobar. That, there he is. Street mod. That's a cool looking uh, Civic there. Quite the build. So tell me about this. Because is this a version of the Civic that we, the front and rear, do we get this here in America? I feel like those are like JDM <sighs> taillights and headlights. You're Asking the very wrong Man. person for Honda uh, knowledge. I, I I'm not a, like a super uh, in the no, in the know Honda guy not, either. I'm not either. Uh, I'm kind of a, a American shitbox connoisseur. There, so. There's gonna be five thousand people that are like <laughs> you idiot. That's yeah, the absolutely. Bar, that's the generation yeah. bar. That's that's what Apes <laughs> for. Yeah, someone will will message us angrily telling us how how wrong we are. I, I'm pretty sure that was just a, a JDM uh, conversion uh, for the nose and tail. I've seen those around. Yeah, but. Uh, you know, I bought JDM headlights for my car, so well, I can see it. US DM versions of the right. yeah, but want that proper headlight cut off. <laughs> get it. <laughs> so group C almost complete. Got a couple more minutes left in this before we go head off to GLTC race number one. There's the two thirty seven. Uh, which I no, uh, that is Jeffrey Hamilton, who is the quickest in our uh, heat two uh, session earlier. That's a track mod car. A 325i. And uh, kind of cool looking. Got an interesting finish on it. Kind of a brown, rusty color. Yeah. Uh, you got a question. Is it is it on purpose or... Yeah, maybe. Is it natural? I don't know. There's a there's a 51 Chevy down there that's drifting where I think <laughs> that finish would be, would be pretty well suited for. But So it looks like at this point in the session, not a ton of drivers going quicker. There's the drones getting you the shots here this afternoon. Got the serial number printed right on it. Nice, uh, well-behaved. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, registration number. I was corrected. <laughs> uh, just so that the FAA doesn't come shoot it down. They got There's like a military something or other. Yeah, in years past, they've done like, they do like, uh, you'll hear cannon fire. Yeah, like some, Ap fire. some Apache's going to come take that yeah. thing out. <laughs> and, and Matt's going to be real mad. It's going <laughs> to... Uh, there thunder was bolt. an Apache flying around here yesterday and some one of those <laughs> twin rotor helicopters. So <laughs> oh, oh, here man. we go again. Oh, Chinook taking off. Yeah. 
Yeah, he, Matt's correcting us. There were Chinooks flying over, not Apaches. Uh, well, uh, there was an Apache yesterday. Huh? I saw it. I, I, I can't claim to have seen the Apache. I did see the Chinooks yesterday. Yes. Uh, a cobra. Okay, cobra. I don't know. It's an attack. I, I'm like a little bit of an sort. aviation nerd, but like I don't. I'm not like super in the know about uh, like you know military configurations of all. My brother-in-law's a fighter pilot, so okay. you'd think I'd know these you, things. You should. But I don't keep track of it. Yeah. So I, I just I would find it mildly sad, but also entertaining if like we had like a little aerial warfare engaged <laughs> with our drones. I uh, think be, that'd be real I fun. I think it was two years ago. <laughs> they were like parachuting out at night with flares and stuff. It was kind of intense. Like to get somebody or are they pr- no, doing no, drills? No, 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 like doing <laughs> drills because I guess behind here is, is a lot of military base. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I, I so all they were doing of, drills of yeah, some sort. That's that's pretty cool. I mean, I need to dr- fall out of an airplane with flares. That sounds like fun. Yeah, right? Uh, I get a lot of the thrill-seeking I need from grid life, but I'm not sure I want to jump out of a plane just yet. I would happily jump out of a perfectly <laughs> good airplane. <laughs> Matt says he'd jump out tied to me. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> I uh, hopefully with a parachute. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's amazing. All right, uh, checkered flag waving here for Group C of Time Attack, and I think with that we're gonna wrap things up here for the Time Attack session. Uh, Kyle Hire alongside Adam Nielsen. Adam, uh, pr- all of, overall this Time Attack session highlighted by Ferris Cartumi just yeah. laying down a, an absolute uh, sick still lap. Still like a loss of words for for that time. What an incredible time. Really, really impressive. Uh, solid lap, but that's going to be the quickest of the day that we've seen so far. Uh, next time attack is tomorrow on our live stream. Yeah. Uh, so, Adam, I guess I'll see you then, and uh, and we'll, we'll check back in. But uh, Daniel Walker at the top of the board for time attack group C. We'll see you in a couple minutes for Grid Life Touring Cup. Grid Life Time Attack is brought to you by Falcon Tire. Falcon Tires, competition proven performance. 303 Performance, premium protectants and cleaners, exceeding expectations since 1980. Stay Bill, ready, willing, stay Bill. Momo, the official safety partner of Grid Life. And by HP Tuners. HP Tuners, connect, read, edit, write, drive. Alpine Horizon is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Airlift Performance. Airlift Performance lets you get low and live your life on air. Check out all their newest products, including Builder Series shocks, threaded manifolds, and Flow Air Ride tanks at airliftperformance.com. been powering the American road since before it was paved. Our first breakthrough in motor oil was introducing it. And we've been reinventing it ever since. From the world's first high mileage oil to the world's first synthetic blend. There are those who change with the times and those who drive them. Valvoline, the original motor oil. 
the Falcon Azenus RT660 is the enthusiast choice for ultra-high performance. Engineered for predictable handling and stability, the RT660 provides maximum traction both on and off the track. Your competitive edge has arrived with the Falcon Azenus RT660. Hawk Performance packs 100 years of friction dynamics into every product. Backed by Carlisle Brake and Friction, the world's premier innovator of industrial brake and friction components, Hawk leverages R&D tools and motorsports experience to deliver uncompromising performance on the street. There's no reason to settle for less. Choose pads that are race proven and street legal. Find the Hawk Performance Brake Dealer near you at hawkperformance.com. FCP Euro is here to help you keep your car on the trails, track, or tarmac after a weekend of thrashing at Grid Life Alpine Horizon Festival. So from now until Saturday, July 31st, we're giving the Grid Life friends and fam 10% off their first order at fcpuro.com using the code Alpine at checkout. Thank you all for watching this weekend, and we hope to see you at the track next time around. What about a pizza delivery? Oh, okay. okay. Trash truck plows through the delivery bikes. Uh, Formula D driver is waiting for his pizza. It says he'll deliver them in his Supra. How about Fast Freddy's Pizza? Love that. Okay, let's go. At the foot of the 15,000-foot summit of Pikes Peak lies Pikes Peak International Raceway, a 1.3-mile, nine-turn roval configuration, a track that has a short but very sweet history with NASCAR, the IRL, and now Grid Life Touring Cup. My name is Kyle Heyer, joined by Tom O'Gorman for GLTC race number one of Alpine Horizons weekend here for Grid Life Festival. Tom, so excited to get this underway. This track always races amazing. Last year, our first race was in the dark. This time, we get to see what's happening. The drivers do, too. I'm super excited. This is going to be awesome. It is wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, 15-minute sprints coming at you. This is race one of four. So if you think this is fun, it's going to get even better throughout the entire weekend. And we have a lot of new faces here at Grid Life Alpine Horizon for this weekend's GLTC races. We saw how it unfolded last year, but a number of new faces have already come in and upset the apple cart in qualifying. They certainly did. Brian Heitkotter is a new driver this season with the Chris Forsberg Racing Nissan 370Z on pole with a 101.8, one of the quickest laps we've ever seen here in GLTC. But before we get too deep, let's have a look here at the track map for Alpine Horizon, Pikes Peak International Raceway. 1.3 miles here, Tom. It's nine turns. It's sort of simple in some ways, but there are challenges lurking here. There certainly are challenges, especially when you cram this much into just over a minute lap. So the start-finish line is at the top of your screen. We stream through turns one and two. That's on the NASCAR circuit. Here we call it turn one. And right about where the blip on the map is, right there, there's a giant bump. It really upsets the cars, but you can go five, six wide through there in GLTC cars if you want. Then a good run down the back straightaway into a quick kink at turn two. Two, heavy braking zone down into turn three into the infield section, and these are basically second, maybe third gear hairpins. Quick drag race between turns three and four. A lot of runoff on the exit of turn four, but then some really tricky chicanes and big curbs to hop through turns five, six, seven, and eight before you got to get her back up onto the banking for the run out of turn nine. That is absolutely critical because you're spit right back out onto that banking for one more lap. And and basically you're on throttle all the way from turn nine all the way to the entrance of turn three. So you're on throttle for basically half the lap around here at Pikes Peak International raceway 15 drivers qualified for our first run of the weekend here tom uh and once we see them pull out of the racetrack we'll run through the order but brian heitkotter i mentioned uh earlier today in practice he ran without his wing figuring hey this is a power track you're going straight a lot of the lap let's try running wingless i went down there and talked to him he said he put the wing back on for qualifying and it was a huge difference wing was the way to go he's put it back on for the race and then right alongside him will be Jeremy Swenson, who has absolutely had flashes of brilliance throughout this season. That is a, a multi-time race winning car here this season in Gridlife Touring Cup. It's a bright purple Corvette, C5 Corvette, uh, one of the first 
of, of that style build. He makes almost the same power all the way through his power band. It's super fast off of any kind of corner, uh, handles well as well, but it is on the heavy side. And what we expect of these two heavy cars on the front row to kind of fade just a little bit, which plays into our third place qualifier's hands maybe just a little bit. Yeah, that's Joel Morrison, the number 71, Nine Lives Racing Honda S2000. Uh, that car is a four-cylinder. It uh, we I think you said it was K-swapped, but uh, that car has certainly got a lot less motor than the others around him, but he was really consistent when he ran in qualifying earlier, 103, 103, 103. So I don't think he's going to be a factor right at the out of the offset of this race, but lap six, seven, eight, nine. I think Joel Morrison's coming for him. Yeah, the big challenge for Joel is going to be getting a good jump at the start because he is, as you mentioned, we're flat out basically from start finish all the way around the NASCAR Speedway uh, down into the infield. That's a long time to be a little bit down on power, and he will be a little bit down on power to the next couple of cars on the grid. The first being Justin Kelly. He qualified in fourth spot, very close to Joel Morrison's times, but that is a J35 V6 swapped uh, Scion FRS. That car is going to make a little bit more grunt, maybe, maybe more similar to Brian Heikotter's car that's on pole. And then just behind them, Eric Jensen and Stephen Cox are a pair of V8s, one in an FRS chassis and one in another C5 Corvette. So Joel's challenge is going to be not getting swallowed on that start. Let's have a look here at the weather. 90 degrees Fahrenheit in the air, about 127 on the racetrack. Pretty toasty down there. Had a little rain shower, cool things off a little bit, but the sun's right back out cooking this place. Uh, turn it into racetrack raisins. Uh, we'll move on now to row number four in the lineup. Jeremy Boysen is back this time in the, in the, in the number 99. That's a old Mugen RSX. Looks great and is pretty quick as well. Jake Jornstad in the number 23 is going to be lined up alongside him. I talked to Jake. We were having trouble discerning which car was which. Uh, their plan was to change number colors. I'm not sure they were able to do that, but they should have a, a, a strip of tape across the windshield of Jake Jornstad's car. So that should be the denoting factor uh, for Jake Jornstad. And then we'll uh, we'll get to the rest of the field as they get to those warm-up laps. We will have two warm-up laps because these laps are so short, uh, just over a minute in length. And that means also with a 15-minute sprint race, we're actually going to do a lot of laps. Normally at these GLTC races, we do between six and up to maybe nine. Uh, but we expect up to 13 to 15 laps here in 15 minutes for Grid Life Touring Cup. There's a great look at what is both the drift arena but the infield road course as well. Uh, coming down off the banking at the bottom of your screen into the turn three section that we talked about to go into a series of hairpins uh, and you'll see, especially when those cars come through the little chicane section at turns five, six, seven, and eight, uh, the curb hopping there is dramatic. It looks super cool, but it also makes for really interesting racing as you change directions through where you see all that green paint there right in the center of your screen. You see a lot of rubber down there as well. The drifters have now since run, what, twice, once? I think just once. Just once. So there's going to be a, a pretty significant change in, in track conditions uh, since the GLTC drivers have seen uh, the track in qualifying. Well, before we get too deep in, let's also cover the points, right? This is a points round for Grid Life Touring Cup. It's not uh, as quite as well attended as the previous race at Autobahn Country Club or our next round at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in a couple of weeks. So there's opportunity here for drivers uh, to grab a lot of points, right? We're coming into this round, Aaron Lichty, Eric Cattill are at the top of the board, uh, 18 points separating them. Luke McGrew, he had trouble at Autobahn, dropped to third. None of those three are here this weekend. Neither is Emil Tab, but Jeremy Swenson, he's 85 points back from Aaron Lichty. He's going to gain a whole bunch of points here this weekend, uh, especially considering he's starting up front. Uh, 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 looks like down a little ways is Jeremy Boysen. Joel Morrison is just there. Brian Heitkotter's back in 13th. He missed a couple rounds. Great points opportunity for a lot of drivers in this field. Yeah, and both, uh, as you mentioned, Jeremy Boysen and Joel Morrison are both in the top 10 for the championship points, and that is season-wide points that we're talking about here. Brian Heitkotter is just outside. He sits 13th, uh, just behind Austin Hurdle, but the key there is Brian Heikotter has still only raced three weekends this season. Uh, everybody else in front of him that we've mentioned so far has raced four, so he's at a disadvantage just on the quantity of races he's done. For him to be that competitive in the season is pretty impressive at this point. It, it really is impressive, and that car has finished very well. It hasn't quite been uh, race win worthy yet, but it, it is there this weekend, and we saw that with the lap time that he ran in qualifying, a 101.872. You know, before Brian even came into Grid Life Touring Cup, when you first heard that he was coming, you said, right, he's going to be really good because Brian is incredibly talented. 2011 GT Academy winner, comes from a sim racing background, but has also raced all over the world and been successful. Yeah, he got to go race in, in uh, Nissan GTR GT3 cars because he won that uh, GT Academy. Also spent some time in the IMSA at the time. I think it was Grand Am Continental Tire Sports Car Series in a Nissan 370Z, very similar to this car. So he's got a lot of experience, especially with Nissan, but with the support of Chris Forsberg Racing. As you mentioned, it hasn't won a race yet, but I do think this front row is very reminiscent to me of 
of our previous round, two two rounds ago at Gingerman, uh, where Brian Heikotter, Jeremy Swenson were poised, in my opinion, to really have a, a, a banger of a weekend. They were the top two cars in race number one. Unfortunately, a penalty put them to the back, and they had to spend the rest of the weekend racing through the field rather than continuing to dominate in the way that it looked that they might. Uh, but I think both of those cars, uh, are they're really going to be tough to beat because they're going to launch off the start really quick, and they're going to be pretty fast for at least the first half of the race, if not more. Got a really special pace car all weekend this weekend. It is a bright yellow 2021 Toyota GR Supra. Big thanks to Toyota for bringing those cars out so we can get a great look at them. Uh, these cars are spectacular. You've driven them. You said they dig real good out of corners. Uh, I, I love how these things look. It's cool to see it uh, pacing our field here at Alpine Horizon. Uh, we're going to see this all weekend long with uh, Mike Cohn behind the wheel. I think one of those would make a pretty good GLTC car. What do you think? Man, I thought there was one supposed to get run at it at some point. I think. I, I, it's only a matter of time, I'm yeah. sure. But uh, there's a good look just behind that car at the uh, the Chris Forsberg Racing 370Z with Brian Heitkotter at the wheel. It's always got that neon orange roof to match the drift cars as well, so that's easy to find overhead. And then Jeremy Swenson, also not that hard to find with that bright purple Corvette. Yeah, of course, I, you know, the livery game has come up significantly this year. You see that orange roof on Brian Heitkotter's car, the bright purple Viking performance wrap on uh, Jeremy Swenson's car. I, I love that at a distance you can immediately know who these guys are. And one of the, my passions about this series, Tom, is, is, is making, uh, you know, pros out of these drivers. They're here racing at, at what I consider a club level, but with pro talent, with, uh, you know, with teams behind them. Some guys are still working out of the garage. I mean, there is so much homebrew, home-built car out here competing with pro-built racing cars like Brian Heikotters. This is an incredible mix of machinery uh, and, and also just some of the best-looking grassroots cars in North America and in the world, frankly. This is a great series. And if you haven't seen GLTC, you're in for a treat. You certainly are, and, and that's the, absolutely the key for me. This lies perfectly in the sweet spot, the best of pro racing, the best of club racing. If you ask yourself, what makes pro racing? Is it good drivers? We have that. Is it a broadcast? You're watching it right now. Is it <laughs> photographers and a lot of media? Guess what? We're at a festival with thousands of people. This is essentially what pro racing is, except we get to do it with these attainable cars that everybody can relate to, and it's just spectacular. Well, very excited to be back at Alpine Horizon, a Grid Life Festival for 2021. Uh, grid order here on row number one, Brian Heitkotter alongside Jeremy Swenson. Then it's going to be Joel Morrison in the Nine Lives Racing S2000. That's a black Black and green S2000. Justin Kelly in a black and red Scion FRS to his left. Row three, Eric Jensen, a black and red Scion FRS LS swapped. He's the 184 car. Stephen Cox in a red, white, and black Corvette. Then Jeremy Boysen in an Acura RSX. Jake Jornstad in another S2000 alongside him starting eighth. Ninth place, Felipe Gonzalez, similar to Jake's car, the number 12. Tiffany Kelly in an S2000 J35 swap, number 68. Then Nick Steneford, he's pretty local, might be a little bit racy on the start with that white S2000 there you see leave the frame alongside Colton Wade in a BMW. W E 46 M3 starting 12th. Bill Griffin starts in 13th in the number 46 and Brian DeFries, he had his drain plug fall out earlier in the 898 so hopefully that car holds together. Jorge Ortiz rounds out the rest of the field. Field coming out of turn number nine, climbing up onto the banking. 2005 was the last year the Indy Racing League ran on the banks here at Pikes Peak International Raceway, but there's a new series in town, and I'm really excited to bring you Grid Life Touring Cup from Alpine Horizon at Pikes Peak International Raceway. Green flag flies, and we're racing at PPIR. Three wide at the start, Jensen up the inside, three wide under the banking, Swenson high, Jensen low, Heidkotter in the middle. Wow, look at the field through the bump right there. Jer Eric, uh, sorry, not Eric, uh, Eric Jensen, that is a heck of a start in the black and red FRS. Jeremy Swenson, no, nowhere really around the outside. They're three wide. Justin oh, Kelly up oh. the inside. They're going to touch door handles. No, they're clean down in the braking oh. zone. Swenson around the outside. That was really tight. Locking up the brakes is Jeremy Boys into the background, but double wide. Jensen loses the lead to, lead to Swenson at the exit at turn number three. He pulls ahead of the Viking Performance Corvette. Now side by side is Bride Heitkotter, but he doesn't quite have overlaps. He'll have to tuck in behind Jensen. The V6 loses out to the V8s at the start. We have a pair of V8s at the front. Heitkotter pushes Jensen along the exit of turn number four. Jeremy Swenson is getting away after outbreak for the lead. Now they pound through the curbs. Heikotter all over him. Swenson, or uh, sorry, not Swenson. That is Kelly just behind. Wow, fantastic start by Jensen, but he's struggling now. His Heikotter's all over him at the exit of turn nine, trying to get overlap as they come up onto the banking. It's V8 versus V6 as they climb up onto the front straightaway here at PPIR. Justin Kelly behind the uh, J35 FRS, streamlining through Swenson at 104.4. First lap down. And they were nearly three wide for fifth place just behind, but Joel Morrison did a pretty good job not
not getting swallowed up too much. They're side by side in the middle of your screen. That's the black and white RSX alongside Tiffany Kelly, who's had a pretty good start from back in 10th. She's up battling for sixth, I think that is. There they are and followed by one of the other Myriad cars. That's probably Felipe Gonzalez because there is no tape on the windshield. Yeah, down into the braking zone now for turn number three. It's still tight for second oh. place. Jensen got a boot from uh, Brian Heikotter. A little bit of contact there in the background. Some of the Myriad cars scattering car off the racetrack. It's Jeremy Boysen. He missed the braking zone and just ran wide in that Acura RSX. Couldn't get it turned in. But now this battle for second place is really heating up. And these guys have to be careful because they're losing so much time to Jeremy Swenson. Look how gone he is. Yeah, Jensen has a new rear end ratio. Shorter gearing in this car. Or actually, I should say, uh, it's, yeah, no, it's longer gearing, rather. It's a four-speed transmission. So maybe that's hurting them in the digs out of these corners. Heikotter apexing late to try to get a run. Jensen wide as he climbs up onto the banking again. Look out. Very tight at the exit of the corner. Now a drag race again. Wow, almost a classic over-under, but he really got balked on the exit, did Heikotter. That's the orange 370Z down the inside. He can get the low line through NASCAR 1 and 2. Wow. They're going to be completely door handle to door handle. Watch this bump as they go through here. Do they move up a lane? Pound off the bump. No, they stay side by side, and the V8 comes back alive this coming through NASCAR 2. Spectacular racing here. Door to door, side by side. FRS versus 370Z into the braking zone. Now Height Cutter's got the overlap down the inside. Justin Kelly's licking his lips. He smells the blood in the water here for second. And look who's joining the battle. Joel Morrison is just in the back now in that black and green S2000. So now we now have a four car battle. So such different cars as well. But Brian Height Cutter picks up that second spot, and he can set his vision forward on Jeremy Swenson, who's uh, just there now leaving into turn five. Well, Heikotter's pulling away quickly from Jensen, who's under attack now from Justin Kelly in the number 86 Myriad Motorsports car. Big climb oh. over the curb for the FRS. He got all out of shape there, Tom. Yeah, Justin Kelly was really dancing over that curb, and it's such a it's such a fine line between landing perfectly and landing uh, what the Russian judge would give you a 4-4 at the Olympics. <laughs> you get the really awkward bump there if you land wrong. But, wow, Heikotter just checked out. This is going to be a fast lap of the race, potentially. Uh, 102.5, that was just about even with Jeremy Swenson, so I think Heikotter's going to reel Swenson in. Jeremy's car is typically quickest at the start of the race, so it's going to fall back into the clutches of everyone else. Here's Morrison now following Kelly, who's right down on the, the white line there on the inside of NASCAR 2. That's an interesting line to take there, Tom. There is a sweet spot to cross that bump, and they were a little too low for my liking. You saw how much it upset Joel Morrison's car, but the S2000 is known for how good it is on the brakes, especially in GLTC trim. And Morrison dancing on the brakes just as he comes off the pedal. It's looking like he's having oh. a little bit of a hard time with power down, even though that is only a K24 four-cylinder in that car. And uh, But he is starting to really put the pressure on Justin Kelly. So Kelly now closing back in on Jensen, who's kind of been the, the cork in the bottle here after the start of the race. He got an incredible launch, got through the gears really well, and then has struggled since then. So I'm not really sure what's up, but uh, he is definitely getting hounded. Two FRSs, both with not their stock motors. They're very different engines inside these cars. But I'm watching the two front runners, Tom, because that lead is coming down across the line. What's Swenson's time? It's going to be a 102.6. How about a 102.2? A half a second gain for Heidkamp. And that's a fast lap of the race for the 370Z driver there. So he's going to be uh, on a ticking time bomb here, whether he can catch Swenson. Passing him is a whole other thing, but we're already th a third into this race. I was going to go back to Eric Jensen. You remember, he qualified fifth. Somehow he led down into turn number three on that first <laughs> lap. So whatever he did to his gearing really works on the start, but you're right. It's not so necessarily the fastest car on the racetrack right now. There's Jeremy Swenson. Big old tires on the rear of that thing, but they get hot quick when you're spinning them up on corner exit here. He is leading this race. This is his formula, right? Shoot out of the can and win the pole, run away. Uh, you know, he started second today and actually wasn't even leading until the exit of three. But now he's uh, getting run back down, which is how things always go. The question is, I think Heikotter's got enough time this time to get to him. Yeah, it's going to be a big question mark. Swenson's line is very, very uh, corner exit centric. You see him opening up the entry, trying to get a late apex, trying to get off the corner and lean into the power that that car has. Look at him cutting distance now on the banking. High cutter <laughs> is visibly closer. It's not a, it's only a couple car lengths, but I would say that that 370 is closer. And once again, goes faster, resets the fast lap of the race at a 102 flat. And remember, race two is gridded on fast lap. High cutter right now is the pole sitter for race two. And look at this, Jensen and uh, Justin Kelly. Look how Jensen pulls on the oval. He's gone in the oval section, but in the road course area in the infield he's really struggling it's just t tail of two cars for the the 184 right now yeah, that's a, the black car is a V8. The black and red is a V6. So neither of these cars are powered by their stock power plant, even though they look very similar on the exterior. Uh, Joel Morrison has not been able to close much up, so this battle is kind of stagnated, and you can guarantee they're pushing as hard as they possibly can. You see how hard the cars are moving around, but uh, nothing doing for any of these guys so far. Tiffany Kelly's behind them a couple seconds back. She's gained three spots since the drop of the green flag, so we'll keep an eye on her as well if it gets a little frisky for third place. Up front, though, as we come up onto the oval, uh, 
to complete our sixth lap. Uh, High Cutter was almost a second quicker. This lead is going to be essentially zero next time by, given the gap being 1.2 seconds. There it is. You can see them now only separated by about eight or nine car lengths here. Only two tenths better for High Cutter, though. At some point, the draft will start to take effect just a little bit. The big wing on the back of that Corvette, the hole it pokes in the air will only help the 370 get closer and closer as the race goes on. Uh, and he's not quite there. I think he needs to be about half cl uh, halfway closer than that. But once that 370 is within that po that hole that the Corvette is poking, uh, it's going to come down even quicker. Look how actually this field is getting very spread out in such a short race. It is. And uh, but dangle the carrot in front of Height Cotter a little bit more. I think he's still coming. we got a long way to go. Still 10 minutes left in this race. We're only six and a half minutes in. That's, what, two laps at Road America? America, so, so much racing left to go. Jorge Ortiz is just up the lane, a lap car. That could box Wentz in just a little bit, depending on where he catches him. But getting really creative with the curbing here, trying to hook the car around. He missed that Ooh. one just a little bit. Yeah, and that, that really doesn't uh, doesn't pay off. You you think maybe the curbs upset the car. No, they actually helped the car here on the infield. There's a look at Jeremy Boysen. After he had that little bit of an off, he's made his way up through what is becoming a really cool battle for just inside the top 10. Colton Wade leading Bill Griffin and Felipe Gonzalez. Gonzalez there in the TLS 2000. Tons of pressure on the back of Bill Griffin, but Griffin has been here before uh, and has a little bit of experience in defending with that uh, Turner Motorsports BMW. Colton Wade has picked up, what is that now, f uh, three spots from, uh, from 12th to be 9th. Great battles going on even deep in the field here. Look at Felipe Gonzalez jumping up onto the curbing at the exit of turn nine to try to hook that car, but washes a little bit wide. Griffin staying a little bit tidier through that section. There is Jeremy Boysen, who's gotten that car rolling after that moment he had down in turn number three. Let's find the leaders because I think Heitkotter is just ed edging just slightly closer, nine, uh, 95 hundredths of a second behind. So I think he's, well, he, it's sort of stagnated, Tom. I thought he was going to catch him quicker. Well. Don't forget, it's 130 degrees track temp out here. These cars are just going to be absolutely scrounging for grip. Oh, There's probably very little grip anywhere you go, but that looked like Heidkotter really gained a lot in the last couple corners through turns 7, 8, and 9. Uh, it's kind of come back to Swenson, though. This is really interesting. The lines Swenson is taking to get back onto the banking make it look like he's slow, and then all of a sudden he's pulled Man, right back out. But he's chipping away at it, though, a tenth at a time. Heidkotter up to about eight tenths back from Swenson. So he's still coming, just slower and slower every time. He's still got half the race left to get it done, and he's being very methodical about this. Maybe he knows that, hey, I shouldn't use up all my rear tire right now because I still have to get past Swenson. And actually, I got her gained a lot in the braking zone there as well. So uh, that was one of the things he was chasing was the braking performance on this car. Had some ABS lockup issues. Those seem to be essentially gone. Working lap number nine, as you mentioned, we crossed the nine-minute mark in this 15-minute sprint race, race one of four for this weekend. And each race builds on the previous one. So we mentioned already Brian Heitkotter on fast lap of this race. We'll start on pole provisionally for the second race as it stands. Now Now we see Jeremy Swenson getting a little bit more Whoa. frisky with the curbs, but High Cutter, look at how <laughs> composed it looks when he uses that curb. Oh, he gained a ton. Big slide on entry to nine. That's going to cost him. You see him wow. wash the rear end out just a little bit. He was so aggressive into eight and nine. I think it might have cost him there just a little bit, but he felt the gain, Tom, so he might try that again. Yeah, you see that gain on the way in. High Cutter is rolling his entry speed, but then the back end got away from him. Swenson swinging way wide and then getting the power down. He builds so much distance on the front straightaway here as they cross the start-finish line, and that also bodes well for if this turns into a drag race, I put my money on Swenson. I would, I would put my money on Swenson too. It makes more noise, so I, that's, that's the one I would pick in a drag race. Into the turn two kink and on the brakes again. It's just incremental closure, height cutter here. But I think you just got you got to be there uh, just once to open the door. And I think that'll, you know, if Swenson can just get in the marbles, that, that'll be all it takes. But to get there and get overlap, that's a real challenge in GLTC. The drivers are just too good. They don't make a lot of mistakes. Through the infield now, working lap number 10. As we, whoa, big moment there. Swenson is getting really aggressive on the left-hander at turn number five. And see if Heitkotter is a little bit more composed this time. Tighter line. I think he figured out that whatever yeah. he did last time wasn't going to work. So he, he backed it up a little bit. I think that was beneficial. Yeah, way cleaner. And that, this is the little zone where, where Swenson's car really stretches its legs. It's got a little bit more power overall, but it also makes really nice flat power. It could essentially be a CVT as far as I'm concerned. It just makes that power consistently all the way across the board. And it's really, really good for consistency. Heitkotter, though, that time through, picked up another uh, little bit of time. I visibly would say he was closer as uh, you see across 
across the line that time. Swenson has officially dropped out of the 102s. He hit 103 flat this time through. Yeah, that was uh, it's still about a tenth of a, 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 a second a lap. And you see height cutter. It's just it's feet at a time. This has got to be agonizing because you can you know the time is running out, Tom. You feel like you have to rush this, but you, you're not even remotely close. You can't dive bomb from that far back. You, there's no way. So he's got to just creep up and keep doing what he's doing. When you're putting on events with so many different groups running, we got to keep the time on schedule. But High Cotter looking like he's not going to have just not enough time to get to the back of Swenson, but he did his job. He ran the fast lap of the race. Here it is, the final corner. Does Swenson slip? Final corner, V8 versus V6. Jeremy Swenson from second on the front row comes out of turn number nine, and he'll add another victory to the several that he's gotten so far in 2021. The same old formula, Tom. Go out, run away. It worked. It almost didn't, though. Remember, Eric Jensen leapt to the lead early on. Swenson with a big braking maneuver down into turn three on that very first lap to take the lead back. That is the kind of racecraft that, oh. I, ooh, ooh, I don't know, that's Eric Jensen stopped. That is well before the start-finish line as well. Yeah. I think looking across oh, the track towards turn number three that breaks my heart because he was going to grab his first podium in gltc now they had just remanufactured that rear differential uh, changed the ratio in it to make it a little bit taller geared for uh, the longer tracks like road america mid ohio on the upcoming schedule he's committed to running everything from here on out i think except for heartland and that might even be the one that he's running but uh out of power oh he's sideways and i wonder well is that that is um it's probably just a little bit of brake smoke coming the, that you see there. I don't know if that's engine related, no, but I, out of the out of the tire well. I think uh, th uh, this is actually a cutout in the racetrack, so he's he's parallel to the track. I, I was worried he is, that he yeah, got this looped. Is just exit of turn uh, on the outside of turn number three. So he's been uh, he's been out of the battle for third for over half a lap, uh, which does promote Justin Kelly up to third. So that's your podium, Swenson, High Cotter, Kelly. The question is, the car looks completely fine. Obviously, yeah. we see Jensen moving inside the car. Uh, doing the right thing by not getting out until everybody's clear of the track, but uh, that's a heartbreaker. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, he's way down there. So you have to wonder if it was some kind of, oh, he's he's kind of backwards the direction travel. Maybe there was a brake issue and he backed it around and, and looped it. It's possible if he's pulling, just waiting to get back onto the track and maybe the car stalled or something. The good news is if it's car going to run, if the car is going to run within the next two hours, the next race is at 6.40 p.m. Uh, uh, Mountain time. Does that I, sound about right? He's mm. got about two hours regardless. Uh, two hours to Six fix ten. that car and he will get to stand on his fast lap of the race, which will put him back well up into the field. He'll get to race for that podium once again, but it does, you know, it does suck to, to lose it on the last lap. Like he that. will actually start fifth uh, if well, uh, if that car will run. Worked for him last time. It, it did. <laughs> uh, we'll have a look at some replays from the race here. Wild start. Great couple laps. Yeah, I really want to see how this – well, we're not going to get to see it necessarily, but into the braking zone and watch Swenson around the outside. We were focused on the cars on the inside because oh, of how close that got. Holy Swenson <laughs> deep on the brakes, just oh. surprised everybody and basically had the pass done by the, turn, by the time they turned in. Yeah, that was a really – well, well, that was a, a sketchy a situation. It looked like the track kind of condenses and compresses, and it just – it's wide enough for three, but oh. that was a tight compression there between Jensen and Height Cutter. That was almost a moment there. There, there might be uh, some scraps of paint from traded from one to the other, but that's racing sometimes. Big curb climbs. These two are going at it all race. Yeah, Jensen really didn't get a break. He did a fantastic job, though, defending in the section of the track that he is not the, the fastest in due to his car, uh, we suspect. But then once they get back up onto that banking, <laughs> he would always pull away from Justin Kelly, and it almost worked for him. Kelly, there you see uh, defending from Joel Morrison, who really didn't get to ch the chance uh, to enter this battle very much, but he turned the third fastest lap of the race, and we'll get another go at it as well. I, I like where he's going to start. He'll be P3 for race number two later today at 6.10 p.m. Mountain Time. There is the battle between Swenson and Heitkotter. Again, it was just car lengths of separation. Tom, it just it, there was just not quite enough time, but uh, I think Heitkotter was in a, got put in such a bad spot on the opening lap. I think if he has room to be more aggressive he might be he might get out front i think if he can pass swenson it's game over yeah he will uh, he'll certainly have learned something I, I was hoping to see back towards the very start of the green flag and see why did that front row and the both front row guys got such a terrible start for someone from fifth to come and pass you uh on a, on a flat out run like that there, something went wrong for those two guys um but whether they were in in the wrong gear whatever it is Awesome to see Eric Jensen doesn't even have to go fix his car in the next two hours. It's already running <laughs> well, again. Well, hopefully. I mean, we yeah. don't know what, what led to that, but he is rolling now, so that's great to see. Uh, and he will head back to the paddock, and we're going to go get that story before our second race uh, in about an hour and a half. So, race one complete. Oh, man, deep breath. You don't get a lot of a breath around here, for sure. You certainly do not. Whether you're in the booth or on the track, no. you do not get a little bit of a breath. Uh, 
I mean, we are pretty high altitude, so maybe that's Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm out of breath just walking up a flight of stairs out here. Maybe that's uh, altitude or something else. But uh, Brian, or Jeremy Swenson adds a, a victory to his list of wins. Uh, just checking the points right now to, to check how many times he has won. That would be his fourth win. That ties the most all, uh, which is yourself and your teammate Andy Smedgard. So there are three drivers now that hold, that hold four victories on the 2021 season. Interestingly, uh, this is the uh, the most diverse uh, amount of winners that we've had in a GLTC season. They've been spread quite significantly across the top ten in the points. Lichty with three, Cattill with two, McGrew with two, Swenson with four, Smedgard and yourself, four each. And uh, I think there was another one. Uh, Dyson Pham had one back at NOLA. Uh, so the wins have been spread around, and uh, everyone gets a little bit of the love here this season. But when push comes to shove, uh, you're going to have to tune in to the later races throughout the season to find out who gets that overall championship. Well, and if I learn anything, you got to show up first. <laughs> but anyway, I think looking into race number two, again, gridded off a fast lap. It's not going to jumble the grid order too much. It looks very similar to qualifying. But what we've got to look for is those two guys on the front row. They get another shot at it, but they cannot slip again because everybody else just learned a lot as well. Joel Morrison, I think, has the pace. If he cannot get swallowed up just a little bit less, he probably got balked by the front two not going at the start. Uh, he is certainly a contender if he can stay in front of the guys he got stuck behind, Kelly and Jensen. Uh, race two could look exactly the same. It could look totally different. You should come watch. Well, Grid Life Touring Cup race one is complete again at 610 Mountain Time for race number two. Next up uh, here in the FCPRO Race HQ will be myself and Paco Abarra joining us for drift competition here in just a little bit. There are a whole bunch of drift cars down there. They're going to make the racetrack all marbly and rubbery again, and we'll get to race on a little bit later, Tom. But uh, the FCPRO Race HQ, big thanks to FCPRO for, for partnering with us here. This is the best setup I think we've ever had in here, uh, actually. We've got, we've got ferns. We've got uh, a... a air-conditioned, well-lit environment. I love All this. Trees. I got a little light-up tree. It's just out of frame, but it's it's pretty in here. So thanks to the guys for setting that up. Thanks to Rescue Euro for being with us. And thanks to Toyota uh, for sponsoring the live streams and, and being our pace car for GLTC. I'm Kyle Heyer alongside Tom O'Gorman. We'll see you in a couple minutes for Drift. Thanks for watching. Grid Life Touring Cup is brought to you by FCP Euro. Every part you buy is guaranteed for life. Falcon Tire. Falcon Tires, competition proven performance. Momo, the official safety partner of Gridlife. Hawk Brakes, race proven, street legal. And by Valvoline, Valvoline VR1, available at advanced auto parts stores. Alpine Horizon is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Airlift Performance. Airlift Performance lets you get low and live your life on air. Check out all their newest products, including Builder Series shocks, threaded manifolds, and Flow Air Ride tanks at airliftperformance.com. FCP Euro is here to help you keep your car on the trails, track, or tarmac after a weekend of thrashing at Gridlife Alpine Horizon Festival. So from now until Saturday, July 31st, we're giving the Gridlife friends and fam 10% off their first order at fcpuro.com using the code Alpine at checkout. Thank you all for watching this weekend, and we hope to see you at the track next time around. The Falcon Azenus RT660 is the enthusiast's choice for ultra-high performance, engineered for predictable handling and stability. The RT660 provides maximum traction both on and off the track. Your competitive edge has arrived with the Falcon Azenus RT660.
about a pizza delivery. Oh, okay. okay. Trash truck plows through the delivery bikes. Uh, Formula D driver is waiting for his pizza. It says he'll deliver them in his Supra. How about Fast Freddy's Pizza? Love that. Okay, let's go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the one, the only, that is Alpine Horizon Festival, Grid Life at Pikes Peaks International Raceway. I'm Jared Dienda. You know what? Glasses off. I mean, you look great. Oh, thank you. You look so thank good. You. I'll let you leave your sunglasses thank on. You, but thank I, just, you. I, I can't see the screen, to be quite honest. Oh, I can see it perfectly. But I have Paco Ibarr. He has eight R's in his name, but he knows a lot about drifting, and I am such... I'm such a... See, I, I, I'm at a loss for words. You are the voice. The you voice know, of drifting. The voice? <laughs> The voice, <laughs> That's all right. well, e easy for you to say. I'm Jared Dienda, Paco Ibarra. Thank you so much for joining so me here. Funny. And we are talking about Grid Life Alpine Horizon Vessel. From what I understand, I just flew in, but we have 70, 70 like plus 70 cars. Is plus the biggest, cars largest it's ever been. Ripping around this iconic track. I mean, IndyCar has been here. NASCAR has been here. I mean, we are just in the shadow of the Pikes Peak Hill Climb. Like, literally, it's right there. I, I mean, I, last I, week was it? I, I mean, were just going at it. Like? It's, it's the Mile High Stadium. Yeah. I mean, th there we you are go. at a mile. I'm at a loss for breath. It's okay. Because I'll take over. guess what? No. You are in for a sensational ride because we have some phenomenal names and some people you've never seen. Some people I've never seen, to be quite honest. But 70 plus drivers are just up in your face. So tell all your friends right now to log into Grid Life, right? I mean, swipe up, subscribe. I don't know. Uh, uh, click like, uh, comment, subscribe. Click, yeah, ring I don't the know. bell. I'm, I'm too old. Ring the <laughs> ring the bell. You are, the bar's closed. Like the, no, the bar is open, baby. Yeah, that's we are live here at Alpine Horizon Festival, the one, the only. You can see Nick Swan with his signature red shoes. His gloves are on, and he is ready to send it. I'm seeing Josh Robinson there. I'm seeing back in the mix your boy Corey Hosford of Maximum Driftcast. Right. I know that uh, Chris Forsberg is in the building. Ryan Turk, uh, Adam LZ, Vaughn Gittin Jr., Chelsea Denofa. Dude, Cletus McFarland, Cletus TJ here. Hunt. Everybody. I mean, dude, there are so many people here and this has bipolar weather. I will tell you that because look at just speaking of horizons, look at this. Just hold on. Beautiful. Moment of tranquility. Calm. Brought to you by Momo. Rolling the memes. <sighs> Exhale and just enjoy all this. <laughs> rolling, Thank you. Rolling the meows. <laughs> rolling the meows. You did it. It is. Yeah. So we are ready to go. George K, right? Is is that? Yes, it does. George K in the purple right? and gold. And you have a yep. Brandon Peja in a hard, tr uh, hard body Nissan truck. 2GC powered. The, uh, diver the diver you love the hard. You love Paco. The, the anti-race car. Fact. It's, yeah, exactly. You it, love the like the, just the conundrum. You you really appreciate the kind of disruptive nature of vehicles. You takes, love Pontiac Aztecs. Yeah, you I mean, love it takes regattas. more work to make a non-race car, non-sports car, to do what race cars do, and I appreciate that. It's like <sighs> I don't know if you like, they, 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 they have the a they have a, uh, an Oldsmobile Cutlass running uh, time attack, and it has the Oldsmobile V8. And I, I want to see that car drifting too. Let's go. Yeah. Let's send yeah, it. Jay Caldwell on his uh, 51 Chevy doing drifting. Dude, I'm I'm seeing the Turbo diversity. <laughs> the diversity is real here at uh, Alpine Horizon Festival. And uh, literally, I just flew in. And uh, why why are you mimicking me? I feel I, like you're mocking me at the same time. <laughs> no, I'm, it, it, it's, you seem comfortable. I was like, oh, I, I guess I guess we're doing this. All right, oh, Josh Robinson and his BMW. So what is what is the track layout that you saw? Because again, I just flew in. Here's the BC Racing custom coilover. Let's roll some coal, Drift as trains. they say. This yep. is the BC Racing drift train yeah. so these are all bc racing drivers that uh, that are currently running the bc racing custom coilover setup got it and bc racing obviously a very predominant 
uh, suspension option for a lot of the drivers. Oh, oh, what? Dirk Stratton in the building. I didn't even see him. Everybody's He's lurking here, in the shadows, lurking in the smoke. Dirk Stratton. Who George else we have? K. George K. His purple. Oh, man. Gold. New livery. I haven't seen yeah. him in a moment. And then we have uh, that's uh, Nick Gross and uh, yep. C6 Corvette all the way from Arizona. Dude, we have people from Italia, Ireland, and then every state we have people came all the way from uh, they, they drove from Florida just to yep. come all the way to Colorado. That's that's the excitement that is Alpine Horizon Festival. There's your boy. No, that's right. uh, oh no, that is uh, I have it right here. Hold on one second. Who's I in the 51? Who's the number 51? On the 51, There's your Jay, hard body. Jay Caldwell, 51 Chevy. It's an actual. It's actually an LS 400 with a 1UZ turbo. There you go. There is Jay Caldwell. Um, Four-door 51 uh, Chevy sedan body mm -hmm. with an LS 400 platform underneath. Rear radiator. And then we have Austin Kriegel from Arizona. Just got his license. Dr. Kriegel. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Showing up. It's so good. Austin Mata. Uh, also, he's oh, doing, yeah. he's, I think he's like second or third in points yeah. right now in Pro Spec. Yep, Dude, Pro yep, Spec. like a lot of people brought their Pro Cars. That's the other awesome thing. Like, these people are not like, ah, some, some people brought their party cars. Some people right. are like full out. Right. They're trying to impress. They're trying to dial, dial their Pro Cars, whatever. Bring yep. everything. I'm seeing Ryan Turk. I'm seeing Larry Chen show up in his, uh, in his Toyota Supra. GR, GR Supra camera car. There's TJ Hunt. He's in his 370Z. 350Z. I think That's 350 or 370? 50. Thank you. 2JC, 350Z. Oh. oh. <laughs> uh, put me on blast. There you go. Up oh, four. Uh, that's what's Send up. Send it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much for Look at TJ Han going memes. hard. That's uh, Josh Robinson on the E46. Uh, E92. E92. Uh, Eurofighter. Yep. Full carbon Kevlar. But so let's body. let's elaborate maybe yes. on Eurofighter a little bit because Eurofighter, from what I understand, is like it needs if for it to be clarified as a Eurofighter, it needs to be built in Latvia. Oh, in that he's was. I, I I feel like it's kind of like a, it's like a roof Porsche, like any. Oh, oh, let's go, I let's see. go. Eye in the sky, Ryan Turk, Adam LZ on his uh, E36. Adam LZ and his E36. Look at him. They're chasing just like him down. And there's Larry Chen each other. in the chase. Canon Toyota Supra. Nice shot. Look at this aerial shot. So this is called creating FOMO. This is the fear of missing out. So this is the reality of that. Hey, FYI, next year, Alpine Horizon Festival. Yeah. Things got weird in 2020. I get it. C can you tell? But, like, Do you think? Uh, your haircut speaks volumes, Paco. <laughs> Thank you. So Glad you I, I appreciate it. It looks good. You and your Porsche Carrera sunglasses. I haven't seen you in like a year. I know, but it, man. it does look good on you. Oh, thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you look a little bit of Soft. like a, yeah. like a bootleg. Who, what's uh, John Wick? You're like <laughs> a bootleg, bootleg John, John Wick. Wick. I was aiming for like the Tony Montana. No. With with no. Uh, with long hair. I mean, Jabay likes it. Uh, oh, thanks, Jabay. Yeah, Jabay. Say Jabay, hello to my Jabay says friend. thumbs up. <laughs> I mean, he's big. I don't know why he's a big Pittsburgh. Penguins fan, oh, but he loves hockey. I, I, I had no idea. Had no idea. And yep. speaking of hockey, I don't hey, know. Hey, let's go, Michael, Michael Essa. Essa. Has nothing to do so with the hockey. So that's his full comp car. Yeah. So that's what you spoke about. Correct. It's it, it is it is really incredible to see that, you know, some of these drivers bringing it out. And uh, I know Forsberg's out here in his comp car, uh, but I do love that. Oh, look at that flick. Michael S is like. But who's the car Champ? in front of him? Who Champ was that? Who was that uh, in front? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, a, a, that's a Mercedes. Remember that uh, four-door Mercedes AMG that's been on a few drift events? Yes, I can't yes. Remember his FCP name, Euro. Yep. It's the FCP Euro vehicle. I right. see Chelsea Dinoff on the starting line. Um, we also have um, all the way from Ireland is Viper. Yeah. East competition Viper. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. I mean, like, you know. Dean Carnage Carney. Dean Carney. You have a Austin Mata competition car as well. You know, like I think this is a good opportunity for a lot of these vehicles and and the drivers to really enjoy just having some downtime as well as I mean we're in a higher elevation. I I brought this up to uh, to Chris Forsberg and his his team. I said, hey man, I mean think about our next round is Seattle. <laughs> so That's we're, like we're all in, the way the opposite. We're in Colorado, and then let's go down to sea level. Sea level. This should be a complete interesting operation from one end of the spectrum to the other. So I, I think that there it is. Yep. Chelsea enough. And he's chased by um, by uh, Andy. Um, 
oh, I forgot his name right now. On the uh, uh, Rudy, Rudy Hansen. Sorry. Yep. Rudy Hansen in, in Sparrow Car as well. Yep. Another, Look at another that. prospect. We are riding shotgun there with Chelsea Denofa. Lighten up the center lines. I like that golden purple livery, man. Looks so good. And it's gonna look even better at night because we have night drifting. We do. We have lasers, we have dinosaurs, sharks with lasers, uh, gray uh, African gray parrots. I just love the way that you say lasers. <laughs> Should I say? Oh, here we go. Team Falcon in the go. building. We got Matt Field, Dai Justin Yoshihara. Pollock, Dai Oshihara. Look at him go. And who is that in tow? Th is that? One, oh, two, okay. Three. So yeah, S is S is following them. Which I mean, is great, he, and yeah. then he knows a thing or two about yeah. drifting. Yeah, and Larry Chen, he's a former champ. <laughs> there's my boy. There's Corey your boy, Hosford. Corey Osford. Following it's thicker Nick than Rose. a snicker. Yeah, there you go. He's getting thicker than a snicker. That's for sure. Easy, bro. Relax, <laughs> COVID body. Come on. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> just relax. You're you're not on camera, but if you wanna bop, shoot bop, over bop, to this bop, bop, bop. little nectar right here. Look at this I'm thing. glad gonna, this is not okay. Gonna, no, he's, he, no, we're going to definitely, if I poked you. Mm. Wait, who is that? Oh, that's uh, what is that? G uh, Chris Jenner. Oh, Chris Jenner in the building. I just saw him. He's eating tacos. Honda. He was just eating tacos over here. So I said, hey, bro, how are you? He says, dude, I'm good. Yeah. Excited to be driving again. So that is a Honda Performance Racing Division Honda. Oh, Matt Sopa. Matt Sopa There's another the AZ. Homeboy holding it Rear down. Rear-wheel drive conversion for Back Fusion. Back to the Fusion. Back to Fusion, that's right. And I Pat. think that's... Uh, uh, um, Is that literal? That's uh, Matthew... Um, I can left, forget his last, last name right now. He's one of our, our Vegas boys. Uh, in, on, in tow. Uh, let's see. What right there. The yeah, a lot, a lot of these gentlemen I'm not familiar with just showing up. Didn't get a driver's list, but... I, at, at the end of the day, uh, we will absolutely give we them some We shine. have a person driving a car with no nope. wheels. Nope. That is that is <laughs> a sensational driver. Better than you there and you I. Go. Austin Fitz in an A4 Audi. Also, like, rear-wheel drive converted A4 from Arizona. Austin Fitz uh, chasing TJ John in his 350Z. That's cool, dude. Like, we, have all, like, we have quite a variety of cars. That's another, another thing you don't see in any other event. Here you have a 350Z with a 2JC engine chased by an Audi. And then we have hard body pickups, we have Corvettes. We have, I, yep. you know, like, look at the variety. Right there, everybody and the Manji. Oh, we. What's this squad? That the, is the, the white gang. The white gang, I have it right here. Uh, the E36 pulled over. That's uh, Max Council and Eric Carell on the, from Drift oh, Factory. Yes. Yep. Yep, those those boys have been banging away for years. And then that white Corvette, uh, oh, where did he go? That's right here. Um, nope. <laughs> Alpine <laughs> Horizon Sheep. Festival, the one, the only. Thank you for so thank you so much for tuning in. Good vibes. Yep. Thank you so much to FCP Euro. Momo. Hashtag Grid Life. Guess what? We are blasting off. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is going off to the moon. You know what? Sometimes, sometimes you just need to wear a cowboy hat. And just tell everybody thank you to my employees. Thank you to everybody that's involved. Thank you to my customers. <laughs> thank you to everybody. Wait, you, is that is that Chris Stewart blasting off right now? Is that Chris? Where at? Chris, is that you? In the at the line? Blasting off in an F-150. Wow. That is a humble brag if I've ever seen one. Like I tell you what, Street Fighter, more like a uh, corner worker fighter. So we have an uh, ether six down. Doing? I think he said, um, "Sorry, it's Sunday. Chick Fil A is closed." Uh, I think that's what he said. Yeah, I, I just. Who's this I, guy? I Mr. Balloons. <laughs> Look at Mr. this guy. Mr. Balloon hands. <laughs> it's, it's, what? Like chairs? <laughs> talking about chairs? I'm talking about balloon hands. Dude. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We are live. Thank you to FCP Euro, Paco Ibarra. Oh. I'm Jared Dienda. Look at those TikTok moves. Alpine Horizon Festival. Jared Dienda, Paco Ibarra. Thank um, you. 
just seeing seeing the collective effort that is the drifting 70 plus vehicles out here shredding so we got i mean what name uh, the names name the what do you got chris forsberg uh we have uh dai yoshihara matt field justin pollock we have ryan turk we have uh alex chelsea nofa vaughn Gittin jr cletus mcfarland tj oh, hunt you're going with yeah adam lz Adam LC, we have uh, Dustin Miles. Yep. We have Austin uh, Austin Mata. We have Rudy Hansen. Yep. We have uh, Alex Jaeger. Dirk Stratton nice. in the building. Yeah, Alex Jaeger's driving the the Flama Negra. But here's here's the reality, that is, Alpine Horizon Festival because we might shut down the cameras after we <laughs> we're on track. What happens off track is even more sensational. It's that's it's, that's the beauty of. Grid life and Alpine Horizon Festival. And it's a vibe. Everybody's it is, vibing. It is such a vibe, man. There you go. Exactly. Hence the name. Good and vibes. It's, uh, everybody's hugging each other. It is, everybody's high five. It is about other. a sensational experience. Yeah. And I just I don't know how to depict it to you and verbalize it to you other than you need to be present. Which means you need to like, comment, and subscribe and be watching this live no, video. What? No, not <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Like, comment, and show up. Yeah, well, actually, that is the the best alternative because... Uh, that is the only alternative. Grid Life, it's a party. We have music. We have food. We have... Jer We're not, it's not a county fair, Paco. It's almost like a county fair. We have, like, you know... Nope, it, it's not. It's, it's better. fun. <laughs> it's better than a county Gosh, fair. damn it, Paco. <laughs> You're really not helping me here. But I do appreciate the candor because I think that what people are, are spectating and envisioning in their mind that look at these media nerds it's like little Is that lewis L lewis Matt. little little larry yeah little and larry Matt marco l2 yeah oh uh, look at, look at i love star. seeing die back All behind right. the wheel s15 they Is have that some, dirk no, that's that? team team scoundrel was oh, that blaze blaze pots followed blaze by jr jr haver haver i never, always I love blaze in the yeah. fc like i'm such a fan of blaze pots have you like seen his shredding. mustache no. It's huge. Gross. It's so nope. big. I don't, how, how, many, how many crumbs do you think are in that thing? <laughs> how many, like, sh tire shrapnel? Oh, my God, look at these Oh, we got, a, we got a Falcon drift train. Dio Shiara, Matt Field, Justin Pollock. I'm seeing Larry Chen, Ryan Turk behind him. Is that, is that Chelsea behind him? That was like, that's a Larry Chen drift train sandwich. That is a Chen sandwich. Look at that. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, you said you know what it. What I mean, sup? Oh, <laughs> uh, you can't even see him. It is it, Colorado. Yes, it's legal what? here, but you, you you can't even see it. Yeah, you can't even see it, but you can see it because holy cow! Everybody's here, man. Who else? I I all of the cars. I'm trying to. I mean, cars everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that was so solid. Well, that's one of the things that has uh, characterized grid life over the years, the long trains of like 10, 15, you know, like Nick Swan is just like send, 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 don't stop, keep right. going. And he's a curator. He's a drift curator. He pretty yeah. much says like, okay, I know up to here, you guys can go. Right. And, you know, bang each other's doors. That's exactly that. No, I'm I'm looking up some people. Sorry, I apologize when uh, when I'm talking to you, and and that is exactly what what's to be expected. Yeah, I'll switch glasses because I want to be able to see this screen a little better. There you go. Now I can see. There's Adam LC in this E36. We have oh um that guy has a Ferrari powered FRS. That, uh, that was uh, Sopa. Matt Sixberg on his 370Z. We go down to his pits. He has an FRS with a Ferrari F136 engine in it. I don't even I don't even know what those memes are, but I really appreciate them, Matt. They Thank help so much. Do they? <laughs> but do they? <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Super Very thumbs nice. up. Look, everybody's going Looks around. Looks good. <laughs> oh, there we go. Falcon crazy. tires. There's Matt and Justin. I mean, the, the party cars. The true highlight is the party on track and the party. Uh, oh, speaking of off track. Oh. I was just about to say, and look at them overshooting 
get into the glossy stuff, and that gets a little sketchy. It does. I will tell you that we do have a session, like you said, Paco, you alluded to that, but I will, I will elaborate that we will be back on track this evening. And Matt, just to, just to clarify, Johnston director, just we should be back and we'll be live, baby, at, what time is it exactly? 6.40 local time, 6.40 local time. For that to 720, session. from what I understand. Perfect. Under the lasers, under the lights. There's still let's a lot more drifting going oh on. Oh my gosh, let's get weird. There's a lot of tires let's to be get weird. destroyed. And look at that. That's Alex Jaeger oh, and Chris yeah. Forsberg. And that's Wait, that's not just Forsberg. That's the Ultimaniac. Ultimaniac driven by Chris Forsberg. Yep. And Alex Jaeger driving the Flama Negra. Yep. So that's eight people in two drift cars. That is, that is a lot of people. A lot of there horsepower. Oh, Chris wow. That's the flexing. first. That is not Chris Forsberg. Chris was explaining me that uh, Grid Life has this app thing where everybody who, signed up, everybody who signed up to the ride alongs, they literally get like a notification. Ding, your ride is next. It's oh, like really? basically like Grid Life Uber. Sick. Yeah. Well. I think that was Rudy Hansen. And send. There you go. Nice. Yeah, Hansen's been. Uh, He's a ripper. Love, love, love for him to step up in the in the prospect. Been seeing a lot of him. I know, I know he's got it in him, and seen a lot of these guys. It's all about track time. It's just like everything. Practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect, right? Practice, practice makes okay. <laughs> Let's see, we have uh, Casey Cole waiting on yep. the line. Andy Crutcher is uh, arriving on his. Scoundrel FC. George K. George K. George K. George is running. I I just like saying Yeah, I I don't know how many I don't know how many syllables are in George K. Yes. There you go. George K. Yeah. It's easier. It's a lot easier. It's easier said than done. Special K. And the, stopped and by. the crutcher. I he, love the vehicle. He was replacing his diff last night because it had like catastrophic failure. And he just got one in his trailer to slap it on. It's like, oh, let's see how it goes. And it looks right. like it's doing good. Good squat. Good composure. Scoundrels. And now back this, to the signature teal and blue. The Falcon Boys. Dioshara, Matt Field, Justin Pollock. That's the old S15 from back in the days. Oh, man. Old Faithful still going. Matt, little correction there, but I do appreciate little Falcon train. Yep, true, true. Falcon, yeah. Falk, yeah. <laughs> Team America, Falcon, yeah. Here again to save the drift day again, yeah. Let's see? It's, that, was, that was a solid collab. Yeah, I almost cursed yeah. like big time. Nope, <laughs> don't, don't do that. Oh, here we go. There you go. RTR boys, ready to rock, ready to rowdy. Fonkin Jr., fresh off of a team favorite. Oh, oh team Carnage. <laughs> Carney. Oh, he's already given the side of the muscle. Like, I want a piece of this. Oh, no. Oh, no. See, you are you're you know, like, your TikToks. Oh, I know. I know. I know exactly <laughs> what's going on. But I don't. Look at Vaughn. All right. So, Vaughn Gittin Jr. out here in his demo car, his Monster Energy Nitto Tire, Ford Performance Mustang RTR Spec 5D. I feel like I'm announcing Formula Drift. And there you go, that Cleeter. That Euro Mercedes, so good. Yeah, there's Cleeter, Cleeter McTeeter. Cleetus. Cleetus McFarland, a.k.a. Garrett. Taking the RTR. There's Adam uh, LZ in his comp car. There you go. Yeah, see, like, everybody's bringing Yo. comp cars. Like, there we go. This is a good that. opportunity. I mean, this track is open. So yep. it's open season. It's and it's like, like, right, cool. like you say, it's a, basically an expression session every yes. time. Yeah, so you're free to do whatever you want. Like, you want to smoke Larry? It's like riding right behind you in his ZR Supra. Smoke Larry. I feel like his ride height is actually really high, but look at that squat, it's though. Yo. I, I feel like we're missing a. Thicker than a. Talk about thicker than a snicker. He's doing squats for days. Those thighs. <laughs> thick thighs save lives. I think you know we're missing I mean? a Ryan Gosling meme. Keep smoking, oh, girl. Yeah, get after it. Yep. Pitter patter. There you go. Cleater. Cleater so, McFarland. So, yeah. And by Falcon Tire. Falcon Tires, competition-proven performance. Momo.
the official safety partner of GridLife. BC Racing, the official suspension of GridLife Drift, highly engineered custom coilovers that put you in control of every driving condition. Alpine Horizon is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Airlift Performance. Airlift Performance lets you get low and live your life on air. Check out all their newest products, including Builder Series shocks, threaded manifolds, and flow air ride tanks at airliftperformance.com.